Welcome to the Man Made Me Tournament of 2021. I'm Charles Hydromel. And I'm Frank Wheatbuck. Today we have a very exciting event for everyone. We're here to watch 15 Meads battle to become the victor of this wonderful Mead tournament. That's right, Charles. We have 15 Meads in play, and it's going to be a fierce battle. All of these Meads today are submitted from the Man Made Mead community. Seriously? All 15? Uh, are you sure he didn't, you know, sneak one in? Uh, absolutely. Much to everyone's surprise, he was able to wrangle 15 Meads for the competition. Well, Frank, I, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm excited to get into this tournament. So, will you explain the rules for us? Definitely. So, let's start by talking about our entrants. We're going to briefly describe each one of them so you can get used to them. This also gives you an opportunity to pick one that you think will be the, the winner. Feel free to comment below with who you think will be the victor of this tournament. So, mead number one is from Andrew. It, it is a blueberry pomegranate hydromel with orange blossom honey. Ooh, that sounds fantastic. Uh, what an interesting pairing of fruits. Hmm. Mead number two is from Nick, and it is a still dry peach mead hitting about 13%. I don't think any of our judges will still be dry after this competition's done. Anyways, um, <laughs> entry number three is from Shane. It's a buckwheat honey mead with cold brew, hits about 13%. Uh, mm, entry number four is from Susan. It's a bourbon boche mead that has mesquite blossom honey, vanilla, mandarin orange peel, banana, Orange blossom honey and oak that was soaked in bourbon. Man, that's quite a list. Those ingredients sound very, very good though. Entry number five is from Larry. It's a blueberry balm hydromel with lemon zest. It's pretty light about, about, at about 4.5%. Entry number six is from Matthew and is a boysenberry melomel. It's about 14%. You know, I've never had boysenberry before, but it sounds like it'd be really interesting. Entry number seven comes to us from Steven and is a tapache style mead with uh, wildflower honey, pineapple, arbor chilies, and padilla chilies, and cinnamon. That's a lot of spice. I sure hope these guys can handle that kind of heat. Spice from cinnamon and peppers? Talk about a challenge. That's a tough one. Entry number eight is from Adam and is a mixed berry mead with raspberry and blueberry. Tart and sweet. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. That'll be interesting. Entry number nine is from Kyle and is a mixed berry bomb. That's all he wrote. So. Entry number 10 is from Jake and is a Tupelo traditional mead. You know, Tupelo honey's pretty delicate. I do wonder how it'll fare in a traditional. I guess it wouldn't have much competition considering it's the only flavor, but I guess we'll find out. Entry number 11 is from Christian, and it is a session mead with lemongrass and amarillo hops, clocking in at about 5.5%. Entry number 12 is from Sean, it's a pie mint with lemongrass and ginger. Entry number 13 is from William, and it is a no water cranberry mellow mel that is sweet and sack strength. Entry number 14 is from Davey, it's a raspberry mead with wildflower honey. Our final mead is number 15, it's from Trevor, it's a strawberry lavender mead. Now that we've met our competitors, let's check out the board. Each mead has been randomly paired up against another. The three judges will taste test each mead and then choose which one they like the most. They will vote with the red slash green coin. The winning mead moves on. Well, folks, um, these judges are ready to go. Let's go over to BC, Tony, and Garrett for the start of round one. We will see you at halftime. Okay, we got two meads here. We have number three versus number 11. Now, I, uh, I'm i not going to tell you what these are until, unless we really need to know. Part of this is for the people watching who have submitted things to see how accurate they uh, are with this. It's kind of like our palette expanders. Mm -hmm. um, of course, in the future we'll talk about it more. Honestly, I don't remember everything that was submitted, so. Uh, you guys, let's start with, how about, let's go with 11 first. 11 seems like it might be an easier start. Ooh, very, very floral and fruity, but very dry. Mm -hmm. 
That's interesting. It's almost like a hard seltzer. Well, yeah, we, we talked about that before, mm -hmm. how sometimes like you taste something and it, uh, like the aroma is so fragrant and mm -hmm. nice, and then the, the taste is the polar opposite. Not yeah. that this isn't nice, but it's much drier than the next. Yeah, it, it really is like, uh, it really is like a hard seltzer. Yeah. But it's pretty refreshing. I mean, part of this, this one is cold. I did not chill every one of them. If someone specified, please chill. I went ahead and did that. So we didn't have any explosions. We already had one explosion. So <laughs> trying to minimize the amount of that. Um, this one's much drier than I thought. Yeah, I don't hate that though. But I, I can't, if there's a fruit in there, if there's something that's supposed to be a dominant flavor, I'm not catching it. Oh, I mean, it tastes hopped. I'm wondering. I think it, like, yeah, I think it's. I think it might be hot. But I because think you can smell the the hop aroma, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. it's a little bit green on the nose. Am, on I, am I getting like a fruit on the nose though? Like I feel like I I'm getting a fruitiness. You think I, it's just the hop? I, 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 I mean, I haven't looked nose. at the can, but but it, yeah, it almost smells like a noble hop, something that's a little bit fruity. Hmm. And I I would guess it's like a fruit honey, maybe like a blueberry or an orange blossom. This All one right. smells really. Let's good. switch. This is now. That was number eleven. Um, now we're on number three. This one's got like candy. Ooh, this is a uh, bouchéed, um, caramelized toffee. Mm-hmm. The body's a little it watery is, though. It is lacking body. Yeah, it's very thin. It, it feels like there weren't enough um, uh, tannic adjustments. No yeah. oaking, no even wine tannin, powdered wine tannin added. Ah, it's very watery. It, it does have like some coffee side though. I get a little bit of like yeah. Like a slight, like, um, uh, okay. Hint of you know what? Bean. Now I see what you mean by, I understand why you need a little bit of tan. <laughs> it just, it gets flatty. It lets it grip just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this has no grip. So you just, all the flavor washes. Yeah, a little so bit, like on the tip of the tongue, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it probably could have used a little bit more acidity. I mean, it's pretty acidic. I like this. Acidity is fine. It's the tannic value. I need a little more floral. I need, I need it to be sweeter. There's, if it's gonna be that acidic, there needs to be some some sugar in there to uh -huh. balance that out. But so, I do think I get a little. Very good. There must be some coffee in here or something because I'm picking up a little bit of that. So it's yeah. got a roastiness. Like it's like I, almost boche coffee style. It. <laughs> I guess I mean this in the best way possible because <laughs> it's it's really not bad at all. It it almost tastes like beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back in here. No. I I know it's a, it's a stretch. It's it's, a, it's definitely a stretch. I see where you're saying. There's a little bit of like a teriyaki thing happened in there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like like <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this is the best way possible. Right word, but it has this like <laughs> it's like savory. It's got the savoriness to it, like meaty character. No, no. I don't care for that. I I would. I'm coming up I, I do think if I were choosing the two, we're going to vote, which to explain the way we're voting <laughs> are these little coins. And this is our judge number. I'm judge number three. Uh, BC is judge number one. You heard judge, that here. <laughs> judge number two. And uh, so we're going to vote via these green and red cards. Yeah. On this side is the is number uh, 11, this side number five. So I think we all unanimously think yeah. this, this one's not bad. This number three. But it just doesn't have enough body, it doesn't have balance, and I, I just prefer this one. So, are we just gonna put these back here? Is yeah, let's go on. We're gonna switch now. We're gonna jump over to our next ones, next round. We've got our next round. This is numbers four versus number 12. Okay. Um, I, I'm gonna be impartial and start with our lighter one first. I think that one will, 12. yeah. Okay. Only because I think sometimes darker can be stronger. Ooh, it smells hot. Mm -hmm. it smells like mint. It's very like sweet. Peppermint. Mm hmm Interesting. It's definitely got some, uh... Mm hmm I'm just diving right in. Go for it. It's got some, like, basil -y, like, sweet basil. Um... Mm -hmm. Sounds to me. Much sweeter than I was expecting. Yeah, the nose is, the nose is deceptive. This is number, by the way, number 12. We're on. It's like a fair amount of herbaceousness. Mm-hmm. You seem like you're not. I'm trying to There's figure out what that flavor, flavor is. It's, yeah. a, it's almost like a, um, it's got like a peachy, peary side to me. Yeah, there's there's a stone fruit thing happening in there. But there is a, uh, a herb of some sort that is added, like a rosemary, like a, 
trying to think what other things in that realm. Yeah, he catches you pretty hard in the back of the throat, but I almost like I kind of like it. Hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. What's your I mean, I'm, my palate is very confused by this flavor. The sweetness is strong. Mm-hmm. Acidity is pretty good too. See, it's ginger. Yeah, you can oh. feel it. You can feel it. Like, yeah, I could. Mm. I do like the acidity level on it though. It's got a little peaking of, of mm. bright acid, yeah, but it's not like that's ginger. Not too much. Um, mm. All right, that's number twelve. Let's go ahead and go to number four. Whoa, oh, it's, yeah. like, it's like really gingery. <laughs> now that I know, uh-huh. now that I can handle it. I might have it. got that flipped. Now this one might be. All right, we're on. We gotta get a couple palate cleansers. So we got mm. some some crackers and some water. So number four. Um, number four. Yeah. Also kind of sweet. Ooh, definitely, definitely Boche. That's a very familiar flavor to me. Oh yeah, that's lovely. I like the caramelized, the, the toffee. There's like so many bright toffee Top. notes in this. That Tastes are... kind of like a Manhattan. Uh-huh. Mmm. I will say the body on it is not very big, but to me, like it's got a little tannic value, but it doesn't like present as big bodied. Mmm. Yeah, there's not a lot of viscosity there to match the sweetness, but man, it's got some burn in the back of the yeah. throat, though. That's a Boche, though. Boche's take forever to get to that go. point where... I really like this, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not describing the burn as bad. No. It, it reminds no, no. me of, like, a, a good bourbon. Mm-hmm. It, it's, just, it's, it, it's just sort of like drinking a, a pretty... I'm a sure pretty, this one's uh, a little hot. This is... High alcohol stout. Well, it kind of, it reminds me of, in uh, Nicaragua, all their rum is 35% because it's meant to be just drink with an ice cube. And those dark rums down there where you can literally just sip them, reminds me a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could drink a fair amount of this in the winter. Okay. We're good. I think... I like that. um, Green is, is darker. Number four. Green is number four. Red is the number 12. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that. I, I do think this one's good, but the flavor uh, profile and the mixing is a little bit confusing to me. Mm-hmm. And just stacked stacked against this one, this one has a little more direct. But that this also has a, just it's more complex. It's got a little bit more going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I want this to be slightly drier and have a little more structure. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that could help it go in the right direction. I also think the gingers. Yeah, that's pretty, way too much. That the brightness. That has to be ginger. I, that has to be ginger. We'll find out. I That's what the after show is about. <laughs> All right, oh. we're gonna switch. All right, uh, here this. we go. This is number nine and number ten. By the way, uh, just to clarify, I mixed and matched things. I didn't put them against each other in any specific order. I literally just kind of put them around. Luck so, of the draw. Yeah, luck of the draw. Where are we start? Um, let's start. Still going lighter. Let's let's keep on the train of the lighter first. This one looks like it's gonna be very bold. Yeah, it does. It smells. I mean, I smelled it. It, it smells sweet. Ooh, there's a lot of... That's an interesting honey character here. I'm not doing a lot of Roma stuff right now. Probably should. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to get an idea for what it is before I go in. I'm just going in. Yeah. I'm not... I, I'm not... We're not, like, going through a score sheet here, so... This has a very, like, traditional... I just want to take it on Facebook. Vibe, but some, the, one interesting thing about this, the water. I feel like the water used as the basis of this was... Um, I don't know what kind of water, but it has something about it. Uh, okay, so it's not it's not super, super thick or anything, but it's really soft. Yeah. Like really, really soft. And I think that may be what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. It feels like the, it's got like a really soft water. I don't know enough about water I don't either. I, but I, I'm not going to speak to that, but this that's what it something. reminds me of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. The honey varietal is interesting too. It doesn't taste like a, to me, it does not have like a bright orange blossom or something that's super defined. That's really good. <laughs> if this if this mm-hmm. is a traditional, which I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I'm not picking anything else mm-hmm. up. In no that. adjuncts. No. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. Next up is number nine. That was number 10. Here's number nine. This one, I don't know if it's just Ooh, my brain, whew. but it looks looks thicker. It's got some viscosity yeah. just in the pour. 
Man, big that fruit. That is berry. That big is... fruit on the nose. It almost has like a garnet. I can't really see the color. That's that's got some tartness like to it. color to it. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty. Kind of a dark rust. It's got some acidity. Mm. Whoa! <laughs> uh, whoa! Oh wow! It's like I can like feel mm-hmm. like my, mm-hmm. my jaw locking up. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I like the berry character, but that tartness is like over. That's just, oh, That needs a lot more sh- sugar. I don't know if it needs more sugar. I think it. It needs back sweetening. It's so sweet. Mm-hmm. It needs more. It is sweet, but the acid. Is I think so the strong. acid's too high. Which I don't know, how would you fight such an acid? Um, this has to be a... My mouth is watering like crazy. No, it's like a blackberry. This tastes like blackberry or some sort of berry in that regard. Boysenberry, maybe? It's the only thing you can do kind of are okay. sweeten it up or use a pH buffer. Mm-hmm. Some uh, potassium... Oh my god. Uh, uh, I like the flavor of it. Yeah, potassium carbon. That's what it is. Yeah. I like the flavor of it, and I kind of mm-hmm. like the tartness, but it's just so it's much so tartness. If this were like about half as tart, I, I think this would be incredible. I think if the tartness weren't as... Well, and that's kind of the beauty of this is like you have that sweet, deep flavor, right. and that tartness just really kind of adds to the character. And yeah. I like that, but it's just every time I t- every time I take a drink, it's just like I, I do yeah. really like this berry flavor, but it's just too. Tough. I would like it twice as sweet, and probably with some like oak. I don't um, think it needs to be sweeter. Personally, uh, uh, I like where the sweetness level is. I think the acidity level, and whatever it is that they're making, whatever it is that's happening that's making it so tart, needs to be. Uh, brought down. Well, the thing is, if they're using only fruit juice, they have no control over the acidity. I understand. Okay. And so, mm-hmm. again, the way to fix that is to buffer the pH with a brewing salt, like calcium carbonate, uh-huh. or to sweeten it to bring those things more into uh, life. I, I got gotcha. you. Okay. And uh, stuff that's tricky to do with a big, a big fruit mead like that. What yeah. kind of fruit is this? It, it tastes. It tastes like blackberry or something. Um, berry mixed berry bomb. So it's got a bunch of berries in it. Okay. Bunch of berries. All right. I, I gotta say, yep. of the two, I'm gonna vote. I'm yeah. gonna vote this, which I believe is a traditional. Yeah. Tupelo tread. This is a. Oh, this is Jake's. There he is. Uh, Jake the snake. Jake's Tupelo. That's okay. This honey is. That's why it's familiar. I think we've had this meat before. Uh-huh. We have had this because I we were drinking it and I was like, the only this thing is this awesome. <laughs> this thing needs a little more tannic help. It needs a little more uh, body boosting to me. I, I can oh, agree with that. And yeah. it could just be that coming off of this, which is so thick mm-hmm. that this feels extra thin. But I do feel like it just needs a little bit of edge. Mm-hmm. That was a great traditional. I think, I think giving it a little tannin would not hurt it in any... Uh-huh. Like, giving it a little bit more structure would make it just a little bit more appealing. So it doesn't... Because it is, because it is so soft, mm-hmm. it, it, it could kind of come off as flabby a little bit. Yeah. And I, and I don't... And that's like kind of... I, I feel like I'm saying that and I'm pushing it by saying that it feels flabby because it really doesn't. But I think a little tannin could help just move it, it in the right direction. Just a little bit more grip. Yep. yep. Well, okay, so in that case, number 10 moves on. All right, let's 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 keep rocking and rolling. This is uh, number, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> dead bees. <laughs> dead bees. Um, number five versus number 13. How do you judge which one is lighter here? Which, um, which part of the rainbow are you coming from? You know, I don't know, but I'm not. All right. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> the Ozarka from Oklahoma is better than the Texas. Uh, you, is that is that a thing? Yeah. Have you tasted them side by side? I don't need to. I I can taste it. I knew before I looked at the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the one that's more clear. We have a little water here. <laughs> okay. Let's start with the one that's more clear. How about those fossil taste? fuels that uh, filtered out for us? We're gonna start with number thirteen. <laughs> have we had too much already? Please the first time, the first time I said that. <laughs> The notes on this one's interesting as well. It's got a, like a small amount of vanilla or something in it. Yeah, it smells like um, kids' candy, like a mm. like a sucker. <laughs> like yeah, a, like a dum dum. Like fruit punch. Oh, that that um, carbonation and the oh yeah slight uh, slight acidity there is kind of oh talk about flabby. You want that carbonation. It's supported a little bit by the carbonation. This one has a, a, a as far as fruit character, like it has like a, a good basis of fruit character, but I don't, I cannot define 
necessarily which which fruit it is. Yeah. I mean, kind of going back to what Tony said, it's got a little bit of a fruit punch kind of uh -huh. character. I, I will say it's not bad. I mean, like it's just it kind of just is like so fruit, fruit punch drink. Yeah, <laughs> I think this. I think this cold. I don't, I don't would have be... enough honey flavor in this. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's crushable. I mean, you could. Yeah, um, it's definitely enjoyable. I, I don't like that yeah. at all. But right. alcohol is good. Yeah, uh, it's not too hot. That's there's there's layers and things about that that are nice. But it finishes um, pretty short. Any more mm -hmm. bright floral notes. All right, we're going going on to five now. Number five. I do like the color on this. This is very rust, like mm -hmm. amber. Look at this orangey thing going, like this orangey. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very sweet. It's got some. What is that? Oh, it almost. You know, it kind of reminds me of is a uh, bread. Hmm. A little bit. It's not quite bread. The acid balance Ooh. in the honey. You, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, a little. It's got that that funk. Hmm. It's a little. Sour. Mm-hmm. I don't have. I don't get any of the like barnyard. No, no, no. But it has. It's like getting into that funky thing without being Britannomyces. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This has a little bit of a zing too. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. In that like ginger realm. But it's not as as point pointed as that. Other mm -hmm. one. I okay. Personally, mm -hmm. that is sweet. It is. It's nearing cloying. Um, I'm gonna vote. And on this side I is think that 13. On this side is five. This is five? Five, 13. And, and 13 so, is the red one. Yeah, 13 is red. Okay. I, I just think that, um, yes, the, the sweetness is a bit, a bit hot on that one. Mm -hmm. However, yeah, it's you know what? I'm gonna shoot characters. my shot here. I'm actually gonna go with this one. Okay. Because the weird I, 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 that feels like it wasn't clean. Mm-hmm. That's mm -hmm. why. To me, I don't think it's Brett, but it, it's. It, it, I hope I'm wrong. I could. Could it just be that juice though? Whatever I mean, juice it could or something be, they used. This is the to me way more oxidation. Way too. more drinkable, and I think that that has too much tannin. Almost. Yeah. So I, I nearly went with this one because I like how crushable that is. I'm imagining myself sitting out fishing and having yeah. four or five of these in an afternoon. But when it comes to complexity and just something that really kind of boggles my palate in a way that's pleasant, I think this one was more interesting. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Uh, number five moves on. We're going to move on to our next round. Wow, half time already. This tournament is flying by. What do you think of the tournament so far? I was definitely surprised by some of these meads. I wasn't expecting two session meads to make it through. Uh, it's interesting. Here's the board as it stands right now. We have 13 versus 10 and 4 versus 11 going into round 2. This second round will be super interesting because some more powerful flavors are coming at other powerful flavors. I'm really interested to see the result of number one versus number 14 because they're the same realm. I bet that'll be we tough. We do have one entry that will be moving on without a battle, and that's entry number 15. His competitor, um, he didn't show up. So uh, he lucked out and is moving on to round two without a fight. Lucky him. Frank, let's hop back in into the action and see what this halftime brings. Tasting this one versus this one. Correct? Yes, this is 14 and number one. Okay. Now we're gonna still start with the lighter one, which is also more clear. This is that number one. I like this. It's very definitely berry. I mean, berries have a very specific color, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't see any like any orange <laughs> colored berry. I mean, I, I can't think of one. I can't so. think of one. No. <laughs> well, that's deceiving. Mm. It smells great. You can smell the honey on the nose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The taste is far different from what I it's expected. It's soft. Though. Like, the nose is soft, like there's a flower in there. 
Yeah, it's got like almost, I don't know, it's not hibiscus, but it's got that realm of um, bright floral side. Woohoo! Yeah, it does. Ah. Hmm. It has this like, it's tart and bitter. You know, the, this one. Like, like, like you ate a little flower, mm -hmm. you know? Like mm -hmm. that bitterness that you get from edible flowers. Yeah. Like that, a chrysanthemum, yeah, or a salad. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Y'all were talking about the water profile on this one, tasting really soft. This one has a very minerally yeah, character. very much yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> totally a different experience. Different water sources. I do. Yeah, it has it has like um, and I know there's there's like some tannin going on, but it has this hard. Mm -hmm. Mineral so driven. Right in the middle. Of almost that. feels like I'm drinking like a really high acid, like really high mineral white wine. It's got that sort of. Mi but, but it has some acid to it. It feels mm -hmm. like cranberry, like yeah, some yeah. sort of like mm -hmm. something like that. Oh, on the nose, I would have said that it was something like lavender, or I don't know, some a softer flower. But the the flavor is bitter. The bitterness. Is I actually think the amount of bitterness is okay, but it needs a little bit of sugar to kind of help mm -hmm. move it mm -hmm. up. If it just had, I mean, just a small amount of sugar to lift it, I think that would be really, really nice. Um, let's move on. This Keep one going. smells like one we had earlier. Number 14. This is my problem with these types of meads, is they all kind of are so similar mm -hmm. that it, it's well, hard to separate them, you know, as far as like something really unique. This has that same bright acid balance, acid profile, and the, the blackberry, whatever it is, boysenberry. But very tart. Oh my god. <laughs> very, oh my very god. tart. Oh. Thanks for the warning. Sorry. Oh. It's it's just so tart. It's got a. Why do we have two super tart? Mmm. Yeah, and it's tannic. It oh my god! On the inside of your mouth. It doesn't go away. Yeah. <laughs> it just like evolves. That's, that's not good. that's not very good. It needs needs some honey. It needs honey. It needs a lot of balancing. Um yeah. Oh I it needs a lot of balancing. Oh my god. Put these out here. So this is number one. This is number fourteen. Right here. Honestly, I think this is the weakest pairing we've had yet. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm judging, so number one, number 14. I'm gonna vote number one, only because this is disorientingly tart. Yeah. It yeah. Has, <laughs> yeah. It has a lot of promise. It does. Uh, it, it just, it does not live up to its potential. I think a, some honey would have fixed a, a part of the issues, but then also trying to round out the tank, the uh, acidity with maybe some more tannin of some sort, or countering, counter acid, if that's a thing. Yeah. It, you know, it, is... it just tastes like I ate, like, a, a really green berry. Mm-hmm. This, well, so it's raspberry, so that's part of the, the acid issue, but god damn, it is 18%, Woo! and the final gravity is 1.009. You know, you so know, all... They started it at, like... Considering that it's 18% alcohol, 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 yeah. alcohol content yeah. balance is really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does not feel like it's 18% alcohol, like... But it needed some, it needed some sugar in there of some kind. Alright, so in that case, then, number one moves on. Whoa. And on to the ground. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna need some chicken neck nuts. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're calling our names. Take a, take a little break and reset. Uh, this is number six versus number seven. Wow. And you're keeping on the same train, go ahead and start with the lighter one. Whoa. Whoa. This is. <laughs> that is aromatic. What does that smell? What is that? I feel like we're back it smells back. like bread. That baby diaper conversation, too. <laughs> Like band aids. <laughs> if there's a band aid y, plasticky. Yeah, there's something on. You know, if I want to drink that. I'm gonna try it. I'm going to. <laughs> oh, and it, um, it feels like. So, ah. Dandelion. <laughs> dandelion, not dandelion, the, the flower. <laughs> dandelion root. But like there's like a this, pepper or something in there. Yeah. What? I haven't tasted it yet. What? This could be I like think one of those. In there. 
Mm, I don't. Mm. I think there is. This tastes like a little bit of pineapple juice to me. Tapache. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, this tastes like a spiced tapache. I don't like. Okay, I don't like stuff with peppers. Mm -hmm. You're picking up the capsaicin though? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. But what you were talking about with the bread, if this is tapache and this is made with the pineapple skins, then you're gonna get all those other microbes mm -hmm. in there uh, in addition sure. to the yeast that you pitch, and that's where you get that funk. No, nope, not not my thing. I don't I don't think it's bad. I think that I can see how people it is would odd. like this. The the nose on this is very odd, but the, Ooh, the taste is is there, like, is there like cinnamon in this? I don't think so. There maybe. There's yeah. definitely a pepper in there. Cinnamon would be traditional for some regions for tapache. Ah, yeah, right. I, I can kind of taste it. It feels like I put a little cinnamon in my mouth. Because mm. it's gritty? Uh, almost, or... almost, but like, I can kind of taste it. <laughs> yeah. So that's number, not, that was seven. That. Let's keep going. That's number six. Alright. So we got another berry bomb mm -hmm. here. Now I'm trying to clear out my palate. Like you know how different this is going to be. Y'all. Oh, sweet. The sweet? Really, 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 really Very, very, very viscous. Incredibly sweet. It's not bad, though. Mm-hmm. The acid can be a little bit... Look, there's a little alcohol hit, alcohol hit and some mm -hmm. acid that are kind of combining to me. But the, the very flavor profile here is... Very nice. It is really good. Yeah, I want like a big slice of cheesecake. Oh yeah, that's yeah. dessert. That is for sure. Yeah. Or just a bunch of blue cheese. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for free. Number six. Uh, yeah, no, hands down. Number no seven is on this side. This one is just, I mean, it it is representing me profile to ah. a T. Okay. Mm. With Priscilla, or Priscilla, how's it Priscilla? Pastilla maybe? Uh, oh, cinnamon. Oh, yeah, there you go. And Arbol chilies. Yeah, okay, so those chilies are really alienating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like to cook with them. Yeah, I've never, oh wow, that's wild. You know, what I will say is he executed this really well uh -huh. because we were able to pick up on all the things. Yeah. We knew that there were pineapple skins and That's chilies yeah. and cinnamon. Absolutely. Well executed. However, this one tastes better. Yeah. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is really good. It's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. and... Boysenberry Mel. Mmm. This was the one that This is... Oh, okay. Well, this one no, is wasn't. actually... Wait. No, this, this was the one fairly that young, it. too. This was, this was yeah. in February. It's very well executed. That's mm -hmm. good. Okay, so in this case, That's number true. six moves on. Our last little pairing, or matchup here is, or are, number two eight. and number eight. Okay. So, <laughs> this one, um, one of these two um, had an adventure in the opening of it. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the, the more clear lighter. Ooh. Big honey on the nose. Mm -hmm. Likey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh wow, that smells wonderful. I do like the the sweetness level. Like it's sweet and it's got floral sweetness too. It's not just like honey sweetness. Or not just uh, what a, sugar sweetness, mm -hmm. but I mean it's got actual floral is sweetness. A, is this a traditional? It's a hydromel. Mm -hmm. It's a hydromel. Yeah. And a balance in a hydromel is so difficult. This needed a little bit more tannin and a little bit of acid. Mm -hmm. amendment. Oh, I don't think it needs more tannin. It's just kind of tannic. I think it needs some. It I needs think it some needs a little. Bit. Really? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have enough. It doesn't have enough something to linger around. It's like right under, like right in front of my gums, like under my lip, my front lip. But it doesn't. It doesn't grip your tongue. Yeah. I, I see. And so, like in my hydromel recipe, I have just a little bit. It's like a gram per gallon of tannin, but it's just enough. This it just gives it some roots to put down. So this it's not is, bad. It's a well executed hydromel. This is number two. This I think this needs a little bit of like malic acid or tartaric. One of the two. Yep. Either one. Uh, yeah, it can have wood. a little more acidity, and I honestly think a, a touch of <laughs> touch of sugar would just help help. Yeah, it. I like the sweetness level where it's at. I don't think I think if you peaked, you would start to um, 
overwhelmed the floral. Like I really like the floral oh, that's, side of it. That's like that's the that's the, the aspect of it that makes it so uh-huh. appealing. It just yeah, I think you're right. A touch of malic acid, and this would be in the sweet spot. All right, so that was number two. Let's move okay. on. Number eight now. Oh, interesting. It smells nice. Mmm. Uh, oh, whoa. Yeah. I got a little more tart than I. Yeah. Way in the back of the throat. Back does. of the tongue, too. That's weird. I mean, it tastes yeasty. Yeah, it's got. <laughs> it got stirred up. <laughs> That's one word for it. Uh, this I mean, one doesn't have like any, enough fl- uh, fruity profile. Anything that's like just popping in my face is like, hey, I'm I'm a parent. It's it's just kind of like, no, it, the fruit doesn't come through enough. Mm. Even if I didn't know it had exploded, I would still say that this isn't done fermenting. Which yeah, tastes way too young. Mm. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and vote now. This was uh, make sure I'm right. Number two. This is number eight over here. So. I think yeah. overall, uh, number eight, it, it just it has some young quality to it. I do think that it probably had a disadvantage that it did go through um, uh, bottle recarving and it kind of exploding. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, that didn't suit it well. But this one just has still has nice. to work on, but it's nice. It's nice. This is the end of round one for us. Um, we will be back with round two, which will have these four, these eight now, combating against each other. If you made a guess down below, I would love to know, of course, were you right? Did your person get knocked out or are they still in? Um, You still have time to take a guess if you haven't. Um, We'll be back soon with the round two, but I'm excited. I think we're getting down to the nitty gritty. This is getting down to the the ones that are, it's gonna be a tough battle. I think there's gonna be more conversation. Yes. So while this <laughs> this video might have been long, these next ones will, uh, you know, they get a little bit shorter, but we get to be more in depth. And each new round requires us to be even more critical. So this should be very interesting and fun. We'll see you soon. We're back. We're in round two, and boy, am I excited to see what happens with these eight meads. Frank. Last round was pretty awesome. We saw 15 meads face off in battle. Now we're in round two and these eight meads are ready to fight. Let's show you the board. Here is what we have so far. On the right side, we have 13 versus 10 and four versus 11. And on the left side, we have two versus six and one versus 15. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of flavor happening in number four and number 11. Number four is a, a bourbon boche mead that has quite a bit of character to it. And number 11 is a session mead made with lemongrass hops. I think that combo will be very interesting to see them kind of go at each other. They're super different. So we'll see which one really does come out on top. On the left side, we've got a berry battle. We have number one versus number uh, 15. Number one's a blueberry pomegranate and number 15 is a strawberry and lavender mead. We didn't see number 15 last round, did we, Charles? We sure didn't. It passes right on, right on through, because it's a competitor. Well, it's competitor didn't show up. Charles, I think it's time. Yes, it is, Frank. Into round Round. two. Two. All right, where are we Here is uh, (laughs) the first round of, of this. This is 11 versus 4. Of course, I'll put some information on the screen for each one of these. As you're curious, it'll be down below. But let's start with 11, keeping our same uh, idea as before. Oh, interesting. It went flat. This mm-hmm. is definitely gone flat. Yeah. Do you want to re pour? Yeah, that might or just at least have like a. We'll top it up. Yeah, a it's bit. Up here. Yeah. Alright, a little fresher in it. Fresher up. Still very dry. Bright floral though. Yeah. Uh, my my really my only complaint is I want this to be just a bit sweeter. Yeah. But I think that hop character is maintained really well. Uh-huh. The acid balance on it is good. It's, it's just not a lot going on. Uh, oh, it's just okay. Yeah. I, I mean that's that's simplicity is totally fine, but it's just like like we said earlier, it just feels like you're drinking a seltzer. Like mm. it's just but there's no like Pineapple, or right, like you right. know, berry, whatever. It's just, it's just, 
Yeah, maybe like a dry like hop. A natural like seltzer. A, I mean, this may have been dry hopped, but maybe more quantity hops. Yeah. To get a little bit more of that. Or like a juicier hop. I don't mind the hop character. It's the sweetness that's Yeah, I want more honey mm -hmm. character. Mm -hmm. So this is 11, by the way, we're not tasting currently. And it may be as simple as changing the type of honey that they're mm -hmm. using. Yeah, yeah. It may just be something like that and, and getting your sugar levels up just a smidge. Just I, I wouldn't go too much with it because I like that it's dry. Okay, let's move on. These so like those 11, we're now moving on. This is four that we're taste testing. These are so polar opposite. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's apples and oranges. This was still so like coffee, toffee. <sighs> I like that warming mm -hmm. though. This is opened up some too, which has gotten your, nice. Yeah, sweeps through your chest. And it doesn't have any of that. Sometimes with this flavor profile, you get too much acid, so it feels a little cidery or a little boozy. This has but some booze on it. I will say the warm. It's yeah. not sharp. Mm -hmm. Flavor-wise, complexity-wise, it's very good. This reminds me of almost like a coffee cocktail of some sort that has some... Kind of like something. a cold brew yeah. type thing. Yeah, I see, I see what you mean. Um, okay. <laughs> well, so on the green right now is number four. And on the red is number 11. I'm gonna go ahead and vote. I, my vote, I think the, oh, interesting. I, I think this one, number four, just presents more mead character, more honey, uh, it preserved honey character better. Mm -hmm. Like the, the internal little bullseye of mead being honey is, is more well represented. Interesting. Here. I think they're both a similar quality product, even though, like you said, they're apples to oranges. I think conceptually, this one is more appealing to me. There, well, yeah, I'll say, in some regards, the hop character can be overwhelming. Like he did a good job mm -hmm. of this, of presenting hop character and keeping that roundness. I think she also did a great job, though. Of, mm -hmm. Like there, there's not one character in here that is so overwhelming. And sometimes when you have so many flavor pro profiles. You can really just uh, make it hard to enjoy because you're you're overwhelmed. I'm yeah. a tiebreaker here. Yeah, uh, you are the tiebreaker. I just there there is some harshness in here. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of youth in here. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like this three months from now might be quite a bit better. And this one, I just I feel like the concept is more interesting, and I think it was well executed. I my only critique. <laughs> Is that I want it to maybe be a little bit sweeter, whereas this, I think I have three or four things I'd like to see tweaked mm. on it. I'd like to see this with more time, and I feel like that's something that you can't necessarily fix. Yeah. Where this has more things to fix. Interesting. More things you can you have control of fixing, I should say. Okay. Well. Tiebreaker. Man, I mean, I was trying not to listen to you guys, but you guys have been very, both very good. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree with both of those things. Kind of, you know, it's, it's one of those things that's just like, if I wanted, if I, instinctively, if I wanted to pick one up and drink it, mm -hmm. it would actually probably be this. Mm -hmm. Because it's just got a little bit more going on. That, that said, um, I could definitely drink a lot more of this, and I think, <laughs> and I think, I think it's just like taking it at face value for what it is. It's very well executed. This is very overwhelming. Like, it's like a a glass in your dime. Yeah. But it's again, it's like it's so difficult to compare these things because it's just so. <laughs> They're, they're both very excellent. Yeah. They're both excellent. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, they're very, very well made. You were saying apples and oranges. It's almost like you're comparing like summer to winter. Yeah, like a like, car or to an yeah. apple. <laughs> they're so totally different. different. Yeah. yeah, I can't even. I, you gotta make a choice though. You have to. So. I am. All right. Well, you know what? Um, other than the hops, I don't think there was any adjuncts in this. So I don't. I don't think that. There is anything being hidden. That's mm -hmm. that's kind of the other thing. I'm willing to bet there's adjuncts in this. 
or something? I mean, looking at the label, it's kind of hard to know. I'm, I'm going to agree with you, actually, <laughs> right. on this. I'm going to go with this, even though I actually enjoy the flavor uh-huh. of this more. I think this was a little bit better executed. Now, according right. to the label, I think all she did... I didn't read the label. ...was she bochet the honey, and then it sat on oak. Mm-hmm. And okay. so I don't know if there was anything else that was added in there, but it does have, like, a like a date or a raisin, like a dry fruit. I, have to, I have to say... I could have let either of these go through and have been really, really happy. Yeah, yeah. I, they they're, they're both really delicious. In that well case, done. Yeah, there you go. Gold star. So, Congratulations to you. Number 11 moves on <laughs> in this case. All right, we are, we are on our next round. We have number 10 versus number 13. So let's start with number 10. Okay. Another, well, one is definitely lighter than the other. Just in that little time in between, these have opened up some, which is presenting a few new characters. Mm. Yeah, I love that like candy flavor that mm-hmm. you get out. Of I like the honey. the honey character. It almost has like a slight liquor like licorice mm-hmm. um, taste to it. Yeah, there's like a fennel mm-hmm. kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah, very good. Yeah, mm-hmm. nah, I agree with that. So this was this is number ten we're talking about right now. I mean, this is just, it's stellar. Yeah, it's I do hard to I argue do, with. do still think that it needs a slight hint of tannic, a little something more clingy, because it's all, it washes down pretty fast, like the sweetness level's nice, mm. the the floral side is great, it just misses that little bit of, doesn't grip you as yeah. much, it kind of slides off. This is no contest for me. Okay, so that's number 10. Number 13? Yeah, you're right, man. Like, 13 is good, oh, yeah. but comparing the head-to-head, it's kind of... This one has a little too much acid tartness to it. 13 is just a little too grippy. I will agree. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it does cranberry well, but I I think cranberry is too acidic this, for something like this. Right, and this presents honey characters so forward so well. I mean, so probably cleanly. you could use cranberry in, like, for that, you know, like, for its tartness. Mm-hmm in conjunction with something else and still taste that cranberry mm-hmm. but you're going to get so much more out of it it's 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 place in this sort of setting serves a different purpose i don't know if being up front is it's maybe it's best cranberry is hard to do well anytime yeah. you look on the internet especially for mead making people are always a little nervous to do it because the the ph balance of it can mm-hmm. be such yeah, a yeah it's hard like if you're doing like peach and cranberry i don't know just whatever you know mm-hmm. peach and cranberry you can use the cranberry as a way to up your tartness, as a way to like yeah, drive yeah. something and not put that up front so that it's just distracting from everything else that's happening. Well, and I think, so this is a no water cranberry, so either he used all cranberry juice or he uh, literally pressed cranberries, which I would be impressed by if that was... So like finding fresh cranberries is really, <laughs> it's really hard. Um, but like, I feel like it needs a little bit of like warm spice and orange zest, something to, you know, like cranberry sauce. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, so yeah. you get some more complexity there where this is it's cranberry juice. It honey. makes me want to try to do a cranberry meal. Yeah. So, uh, right, well, we have a winner. Number so. 10 in this case <laughs> moves on. So let's go to our next one. Okay, so we are in the next round. This is number one versus number 15. I'm going to go ahead and put these out here. One's red, 15 is green. And 15 we haven't had yet. 15's new. Since we had fifteen, we had fifteen meads in total. Mm-hmm. We had to uh, have one move on without uh, a battle. So should we start with that one then? Let's do. Yeah, let's start with that one since it's brand new. Here's fifteen. Oh, that's a. Little... Oh, that was that's... a lot of fruity, a lot of um... smoky. I do get like a little bit of hib- like hibiscusy. Uh, say, uh, what's it like that? There's a herb in here. It's like sweet basil oak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I think whatever adjunct that is that we're tasting, because mm-hmm. I think we're all thinking of the same thing, is what's causing that bitterness. There's some there's some bitterness. There's some there's earthiness to this, which is very mm-hmm. interesting. I haven't experienced earthiness in much of these at all. So it's it's almost like sage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a like you know you breakfast sausage will have sausage uh-huh. in it, and it's that like, 
grassy, gritty, floral kind of thing. It took a moment for me to get come around to it. It's it's better. I, I mean, I think everything once you get used past the first sip, you can kind of understand it more. The first sip was a bit jarring to me, but I do think there's a mm. the the sweetness <laughs> level's nice. Odd. Sweetness it is, level's it's nice. It's kind of odd, yeah. There's a the tannic values act okay to me. It's it has a little oddness to it. It's not like a normal tannin. Um, it's young. Though, or there, it tastes young. There's, there's a burn in there. It's very, it's like very floral too, and I think that's kind of contributing to that bitterness. Mhm. Mm mhm. All right. So that was uh, number fifteen. Here's number one. Mm. Oh, yeah, I need a, need a, shot them though. I feel like I'm in the same dilemma I was in. <coughs> earlier with his they're not quite as starkly different yeah. but they're both about as equally well made I feel like and I don't mean that in a negative light I just mean they're about as far as like the competency of them both they're about the same but they have such different issues you know I'll follow you yeah I got you yeah huh neither of them are really bad I don't by know. any means I don't think either of them are really great either. Um, That's but fair. I think I think that this one is less difficult to drink, and so that gets my vote. This one's kind of hard to suck down. Oh. Like it's not like triggering a gag reflex or anything, but I I definitely like have to convince myself to take another sip. This one has fifteen has a slight. I, I don't know if you just said this, but it's you know, <coughs> like robotus any like ness to it. There's like a slight edge to it. Well, I think it's that bitterness he's talking about. This is so lackluster <laughs> that it, I have no interest in drinking it. I'm, yeah, I'm, actually gonna, I'm actually going to go there. Okay, well. No, it's too late, Garrett. You already put your... I had my numbers back. No, I, I think that in this case, this one to me... With just a slight bit of tweaking, I think it could really. Uh, I feel bring like out. this needs less work than that. Maybe I. I think some honey <coughs> to back <backstage> this <laughs> would also help t take a lot of the brightness away that's jarring, and really kind of warm it up. This one to me could be just time that's needed here, but there are some some popping flavors that I don't think are going to go away necessarily with time. Like some flavors. Will uh, will fade out more so than others. There are some yeah. bright floral notes that I think will only get stronger and stronger, and they're already a little overwhelming in some regards to me. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So number one moves on. Let's get to our last round for this one. We are in our last of this round, so this will dictate who moves forward, yeah. and then we'll be in round three. Woo. We have um, number two. And number six. Now number two is on the green, number six is on the red. Let's go ahead and get to tasting. We'll get a little bit more number two here. Yeah. Oh, is this sparkling? Um, at some point it might have been. I think that might have been. Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, yeah, it was. Well, it was earlier. Yeah. Okay. And it had a fizz when I popped it. Oh, that's right, it did. Okay. Well, say I just freshened up a little bit. You might do the same thing, Tony. That carbonation that's there adds adds some stuff that it definitely moves it around. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna dump a little out because that cup's pretty full. Oh, I remember. This is the peach one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I really like the floral. Uh, we talked about this already. Mm -hmm. The floral side of this. It it's is very fruity. Mm -hmm. Perfumey. We, we we briefly talked about how this is. It carries through though on the palate. Like it doesn't lose itself. At all, it's like, oh, that smells great, and then you taste it, and it's like, there's That's nothing right. there. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe it's because I know it's peach now, but there is a, a bright fruity flavor. I would still not pick it out as peach, but I would pick out a bright fruity flavor that could also be confused as bright floral. Yeah, I was really going to say is is you could easily convince yourself that that's based on the honey varietal, not mm -hmm. on any adjunct or fruit that has been added. I am curious how this would do hopped. Mm -hmm. I, I, if somebody just handed me a can of this, 
at the lake or whatever, like, I would drink a bunch of Yeah. Them. No, no, it's good. <laughs> it's it's really good. Cool. And I think with, like, a, a fruity hop like Calypso, where you get some of those stone fruit, grapefruit, or citra, where it's, like, all, like, orange peel, lemon peel kind of flavors, could really complement this really well. I, I wonder if using a different stone fruit might actually be better, or using, or using peach and then supporting it with, like, apricot or something else, mm -hmm. just to help it. Because it does get a little bit lost. Yeah. And that might be a good move just to change that to, so that you have two different fruits in there to kind of help carry it. Yeah. I do think this next yeah. one will be interesting, though. Yeah. It's a very bold pairing of the two. So this is um, the big berry one. This one to me has a good. very, very, very good balance of sweetness to acidity to tannic value. Yeah, this one's really well executed. I think that... It, it's so like jammy, use that word a lot with mm. these things, but it is, it's very full body. And I love that. I mean, that's something yeah. that I feel like I'm always chasing, probably only coming from using real fruit juice slash mm. fermenting maybe on skins. I'm, I'm probably a pretty high final gravity. I'm mm -hmm. going to oh, yeah, this is like 10, go, 40, 10, go for sure. the direction that you guys went and say that probably one of the last things we talked, this was probably harder to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's still really well done, I think, mm -hmm. at, at, at some level, and which is making me want to go with that. Even though I think this is really tasty, um, we've had a lot of those today again, and like, I think this was harder to do, and I still think you did a good job. It's still super drinkable. Um, really outside of like supporting the fruit character, that's all it really needs. It's just a little mm. bit more fruit character. This could dial back the alcohol a little bit more. I think it is still pretty acidic. I think that could be dialed back a little bit more um, just to make it a little bit more balanced. Mm -hmm. I think there's more to do here than there is on that. So the point he makes about this needing <clears throat> or, or being more difficult to execute, I think is right. Except for the fact that they wrote peach on the label, and I feel like if if peach is in there, if it's supposed to be a peach hydromel, it should taste like peaches up front. Yeah. And so I do think there's more refining that could be done to this. Um, there's a, a for a hydromel, it's really well done. Yes, hydromel, very well done. There's essential refining in fruit character that I'm missing. If if I saw mm -hmm. someone hand me a can of peach hydromel mm -hmm. and I taste it, and I'm not immediately thinking peach or whatever right. then my brain goes well I, that's where i'm at if this didn't say that it was peach and it was just supposed to be a hydromel this would be the clear winner but i think that this one is better mm -hmm. all right but so, I, I i i really see I, your point though. here's the thing this is a tough one because they're both really good they're both very this very is well. kind of the situation we had earlier yeah like if we had been comparing these two it would be a different conversation. <laughs> yes, yes. No, absolutely. This one would kill that one, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. I think... Okay, well, in this case... I don't know. It's almost... You know what? It's almost like... The, my only problem with, like, doing this this way <laughs> is that we're almost, like, fighting, like, brawn with brains, you know? Mm -hmm. Because... Because... Yeah. It's like... How do you how do you compare these things that are just so starkly mm -hmm. different uh, and boils, in their own right? Like kind of have. But it boils down to execution. I think right. at the end of the day, this is execution. I think that's what we're. That's right. at least where my brain is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no I, I agree. I think these are both really good. That was, this was a tough decision. Number six moves on. Number six moves on. So this was the last round of our round two. It's already flying by. Flying by. I know. Next one will be round three, and it will be the four we have left here going against each other. And then, of course, the very final one will be the final two. So make sure you go and check out, um, if you didn't already see it, the first one to see what, what all is there. We had a start of 15 meads. So if you're just catching this, this was only eight of them. Um, and there were seven more that were also very fun to, to go through. So check that out. Make sure that you leave a comment. Did your person stay in? Did, your, did the mead you anticipated stay in? Um, you know, I think that that's part of the fun of all this. So uh, BC, 
Tony, we're about to uh, embark on the next adventure. You guys ready? Absolutely. <laughs> See you guys in round three. <laughs> Quick breather. <laughs> We're back! Yes, we are, and we're here for the third round of the Man Made Me Tournament. I'm Charles. And I'm Frank. We are here to complete the third round of the Man Made Me Tournament. You can check out the other rounds of this tournament on the Man Made Me channel. That's right. You don't want to miss the action that led us to round three. We've got about four meets competing to go into our grand final round. Let's go ahead and check out the board. We've got Mead 10 versus Mead 11 and Mead 6 versus Mead 1. Mead number 10 is a two below traditional and it's facing against a lemongrass and hopped session mead. Both of these meads have been crushing it in the competition. I'm very curious to see who comes out as the victor from that duo. Me too. And Mead number 6 is a boysenberry melomel that will be versing Mead number one, which is a blueberry pomegranate melomel. That's a melomel face-off, no way. It's, it's gonna be a fierce battle. And I think everybody should be excited. We're gonna go ahead and hop right into round three. Comment below who you think will win from each pair, and we'll see you in round four. Welcome this. to round do this. three. VC's <laughs> <laughs> charged, ready to yeah, go. Yeah. We're uh, we're in round three of the Man Made Bean Tournament of 2021. <laughs> Need a tap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, we're rolling. I'm, I'm keeping this. <laughs> I just like you. Just look. I mean, you just like faded right now. <laughs> um, I've had mead basically all morning. We ate chicken nuggets for lunch. <laughs> Just living it's the nap dream. Time, yeah. <laughs> it's nap time now. So, we're, we're in round three. Are we in college? <laughs> this is, uh, uh, this, these are all viewer submitted meads. So if you want to go back and watch round one and round two, we started with 15, we paired it down to eight. Now we're down to four. You can see the board here. This is what's left. If you'd like to take a guess to see who's going to move on of these four, feel free to do that below. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started on this side over here. This is the first grouping of meads, and we're going to see, figure out who continues on. All oh, right, we board. have our first pairing. We have number 10 versus number 11. Um, let's start with number 11. Is that the lighter one? Lighter, yes. This is the hot. This is the the hot character we've been uh, uh, diving into. There's a there's a friend in mine. I will say my biggest beef with this, as we've talked about it. each round, okay. it doesn't have enough. I thought that was sorry. It doesn't have enough honey character to really push it forward for me. It's that got a nice hot character. Yeah, hopped one. It and it just. I the think I, I like want to like this more than maybe I do. The hot the hopped one. Mm -hmm. It's not bad at all, mm -hmm. it, and I and I, I think there's like a lot of potential. It's very very drinkable. Yeah, but the Tupelo, which red is this um, number ten, which is mm -hmm. a Tupelo traditional, as we found out, and eleven is this hopped one is green. Uh, it just presents so I much nice mead. I still yeah. even even as light and vibrant and just easy going as this this. Um, Hydromel is. Mm -hmm. I still, when I drink the two, this just, I still want to drink more of yeah. this. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's just like so inviting and tasty. Like it needs a little tweaking, but really I just, they, they do it. They did it well. I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sold on this. This one's good. It just needs some refinements that <laughs> will, <laughs> it just needs some refinements to help push it forward. I'm gonna try. So number 10 moves on. Let's get to our next one. Woohoo! There. All right, now we are on the last part of round three. This is number one versus number six. Um, let's start with number one. A little lighter. They're both red, as we just commented. <laughs> they sure are. This one is a little bit odd to me, which if I'm remembering what this tastes like, because they're both like berry-esque. 
this is like hydromel strength. This is more like mm -hmm. sac strength. And so you have some different complications, so to speak. There are some. As oh yeah, this, this is carbonated. As want. this opens up, and or I guess since it was flat, but there, are, there's some something shit. medicinal and mm -hmm. slightly offensive that's coming. Like a little cherry, like a little uh, mm -hmm. robotesny. For number one. Yeah. Really? I don't think it tastes. Something has come out. I don't really think it tastes medicinal. I didn't think it did the first few times we tasted it. I kind of get like a mineral thing, mm. like a mineral astringency. Yeah, it's that bitter, slightly sweet. It's it's not medicinal like, like where it's got that boozy ethanol kind of thing, but like, like a tincture, like a yeah snake oil salesman. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a snake oil salesman. There's a little little something going on in there. I just can't like this one is so awesome. This is number six is red. Number one is green. Um, number six is just so berry forward, so rich and. It reminds me a lot of the one we were arguing about several weeks ago. It does. It does. It's not quite as just tight. Mm-hmm. And nuance. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't quite have the like length of complexity either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very yeah. Yeah. reminiscent. They did it's a really good job. It's a very, very good this job. would this would at competition get a pretty high score. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So now number we're six. Up for the same kind of. I know. <laughs> number six moves on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same thing that happened last time. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be. Yep. <laughs> Except there's only three of us, so. Yeah. So this was the round three end, uh, end, uh, ending, essentially. So we have number six versus number ten as our grand finals, our round four. Um, you can anticipate that very soon. Um, this is going to be a, a close one. We are now down to the, I would say arguably, the, the toughest thing being that we're having to be super nitty gritty and be kind of uh, hypercritical of each thing which is fun in some regards, but also hard. So we will taste test these next time. Um, if you would like to guess of the two, a Tupelo traditional versus a boysenberry mead, which one will be the victor at the end? This is literally the same thing yeah, we dealing with last time. Feel free to comment <laughs> below. And uh, we'll be back soon with round four. We'll see you then. Welcome to round four of the Man Made Mead Tournament of 2021. We're here for the grand finale of this awesome tournament that saw 15 meads compete against one another. We started with 15, we're down to the final two. I can't believe we're here. It's been quite the ride. Our final two competitors are mead number six and mead number 10. These two meads have been kicking butt and taking names. This is going to be a big showdown between a traditional mead and a bold, mellow mouth. Frank, who do you think will win this round? I have no idea. This could be a toss up. Both meads are amazing. I know that with us starting with so many, we're now down to the best of the best. So, hmm. Let's recap where we began. We started with the board like this in round one and ended it with it like this. After round two, we were left with this, and after round three, we had this. This tournament has been a blast, and I can't wait to, to see the results. Charles, it's been a pleasure serving with you on this commentator's panel. Something tells me this is the last time we'll see each other. Frank. Charles. It's, it's been a pleasure, Wheat Buck. On to the grand finale. Here we are for round four of the Man Made Me Tournament of 2021. You can see the board is pretty clear, and that's because we started with 15, we paired it down to eight, down to four, and now we're down to our final two. We have number 10 and number six. Now, if you'd like to know every mead that was entered, that'll be below, but specifically the two that are here now are um, what we've gotten down to. I have BC and Tony. If you've watched the previous videos, you've seen the whole event and everything, and I encourage you to go back because there have been some really fun meets. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, I, I'm anticipating this one. I think this one's gonna be 
bit brutal. So we're gonna go ahead and taste test these and decide of the two, which one, uh, I'm gonna say better, but I have a feeling that we're gonna get into some nitty gritty <laughs> of yeah. what better means yeah. by the end of this. So um, on the green right here is number six and on the yellow, what is this, red, <laughs> is number 10. So let's, <laughs> do you need your eyes? <laughs> It's all the mead flung. There. Yeah. I'm starting to see. All right. Same um, colors. <laughs> let's start with number 10 in okay. this case. Number 10. So this is, we already know it, the bottle's in front of us. This is a Tupelo traditional mead. We both use Tupelo honey a fair amount. Yeah, so. quite a bit. I used some last night. The one thing that's fascinating about this Tupelo honey that I've never noticed is the amount of uh, licorice-like notes. Now it's not like directly black licorice, -y, sure. but it's like a hint of it. You mm -hmm. get a little bit of it there. That I've never kind noticed of it. Anise, fennel family of flavors, mm -hmm. um, and it's got like a candy flavor yeah. to it. It's got like a rich, chewy, lusciousness that some other honeys, when fermented out like this, don't carry along yeah. with them. And I do enjoy about this that the, the alcohol is not super present. Mm -hmm. It's it's there, but it's on the, on the back end. I don't know what the ABV on this is. Fifteen point four. There we go. Which is that's pretty hot. It's pretty hot. And for it to be yeah. hidden so well is impressive. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't know how old this is. He didn't include that with with that information. It kind of has this um, graininess to it. Not texturally, but like um, like oats or like buckwheat or like those sorts um, of grains. Like a cereal. Yeah. <clears throat> cereal, yeah. That has that sort of thing going on. Interesting. And I really like that. Mm -hmm. That's not something I would really generally think about, but it's got that or like even really look for, mm -hmm. but it's so apparent to me, and I think that's just the yeast that he used mm -hmm. that's, that, that's, that I'm picking that up from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just so, it, it makes the complexity of it so unique from some of the other traditionals that I've had mm -hmm. that I I just think it's super cool. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that, I, it ties it together. Big warm hug, like yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's yeah. it's a really comfortable place to be in. Yes, mm -hmm. and then again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, like potentially the water that he used, mm -hmm. yeah, has made texturally a pretty like soft, inviting palate, and I think that even though it's not super thick and super lush, mm -hmm. like maybe what we're about to taste is because we all know what, what's happening here, is going to be like it's still soft. And it's like sleeping on a feather pillow, you know. Mm -hmm. It's got that kind of mm -hmm. thing going on. So I will, I will say this: before we vote, when we vote, we're gonna do it all at once. Oh, okay. Instead of someone voting and someone voting and someone voting, it's gonna be three, no, two, one. No tiebreaker. No, well, I mean, there could be a tiebreaker. Or not, well, no tiebreaker. There could be a, a contentious like. Get together, oh wait, Garrett, get together. <laughs> the fourth person comes in. We're in a ring. There's a fourth number that appears. <laughs> Um, all right, we're gonna switch over now to number six. That was number ten. It's number six. I'm gonna rip my numbers in half. So. Yeah. <laughs> the nose on this is just incredible. Yeah, the it tells you exactly what you're about to experience. The preservation of of berry and uh, I mean, it tastes it, it smells like a berry, which I know is odd, but like when you ferment something, sometimes it's so altered by the end. You get mm. weird flavors that pop out, things that just don't match. What I what I think is so great about this is that it's got that tartness to back it up, the, tar the sugar. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. everything is like, everything might be at like a 10, but everything's there, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Everything's amplified, but it's all together and really, really well balanced. Yeah. Now the balance on this, I, I don't know that there's anything I could recommend to change about the balance on this. The and acid's perfect, the tannin is grippy and holistic, the sweetness is right where I want it to be for it to taste like. And it's honey sweetness, sweetness. that's what's that's right. important to me. Mm -hmm. It's not just sugary, it is a floral, 
honey sweetness, right. whatever varietal. If you do a really long exhale after mm-hmm. you take a sip of it, it's just honey after honey after honey coming out, mm-hmm. which is oftentimes kind of difficult to achieve in something like this. Where the viscosity so of it's really nice too. Characters. Mm. And again, still has that like herbaceous, earthy, like wet forest floor, mm-hmm. tobacco, cigar box, cedar box type thing going mm-hmm. on. It's not as predominant as some other means I've had like this that are like going back to what we had a few weeks ago. Like that was very herbace, very earthy, and it was really, really, really cool. Um, this doesn't have quite that ex- extreme of right. a character, but uh-huh. it is there. It's still like it's searching. You have to search for it. I think mm-hmm. a little harder, but it's it, which I think is part of the fun of it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So here's the the real challenge. Both of these are executed superbly. Yes. And but they both present radically different styles of the meat spectrum. You have this thing that is utilizing honey alone and highlighting the honey by itself, mm-hmm. and then you have something that is also highlighting honey, but mostly highlighting, I would say, berry flavor in that fermentation of, of berry. Now there is honey character still present, mm-hmm. but you got a mellow mel versus a traditional. And execution, I would say, even harder for me, execution on both is also very, very good. They're not just good by themselves, but they you can tell that the people who did them had method to their madness, mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of care, mm-hmm. I think, in both of these. Like, whoever was making these said they were really making sure that they took the time and there was like love intentionality intention yeah, yeah like yeah and um i have to say i don't think of everything that we've had today i really really felt like that yeah you know, there were some good ones but i think the amount of like intensity that they all brought but well i think to your point you can you could care about a mean you could love it and do everything you're supposed to do but if you don't have the right, <laughs> I just feel like there should be some like romantic <laughs> music, <There's> just, <laughs> build up, a slow zoom in. You can care about me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put a filter on our you face. You can pour yourself Tweety into bird. it. <laughs> but, so to that point, like you're saying though, and like like I just said, you can you can know <laughs> to that point, like I just said. <laughs> this is um, the end of the end of the road. You can tell. <laughs> So as I was so eloquently saying, <laughs> um, go ahead, go ahead. I'll stop interrupting. Um, <laughs> force more bead. <laughs> aggressively force. <laughs> you can you can know um, you can have every good intention, but still not know know exactly how to do it right. And so uh, to me, yeah. these people not only cared about it well, but they they knew what to do to get it to the right point. And I think other people did similar things. Maybe they didn't have the same uh, directive, didn't have the same ideas on how to properly do things. Um, they're all, we had lots of great meads, but yeah. these two, I mean, are just shining in that regard. So here's what I vote we do. I think we should, three, two, one, vote. You lay down your card. Okay. Right. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk know, after. I'm ready, boys. I don't know that we, we need, need to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> pull it around, pull it around. <laughs> I'm rolling my sleeves. So on this side, in the green little corner, and in the green corner. In the green corner. <laughs> number <laughs> number six. Coming in at 16% alcohol, 250 pounds. <laughs> it's number six. <laughs> I think we're going to say the gravity. Oh, no. I, I couldn't. Yeah, I, that's I couldn't that's pretty hard to do. This feels weird. I can't. <laughs> oh, come on. Too country. I'm too country for this. Number, number 10's on our red. I think we go ahead and vote. Okay. Um, are you ready to vote, Tony? Do you need a moment? Some more sips. A couple sips. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't think gonna, I don't think that's gonna fix anything. Get you a curly straw. I'm not, I don't think it's gonna fix anything to keep drinking these. I think I just need to like think about it just for a moment more. Okay. And really make the choice, right? You just tell me when you're ready. I'll count us down. I think I'm. I think I'm ready. Even though it, this is so, somewhat <laughs> going against my better judgment, but I'm gonna. Oh. I, I say that like I say that meaning, 
I'll explain. I'll okay. explain yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Save it for the wrap up video. We gotta keep yeah. them coming back next week. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one, vote. Oh! Wow. Oh okay. my God! <laughs> I, it, I, there Save, are things that could be improved here. I think this is Save it for the wrap up. We gotta, we're we going to talk about why these two, why we chose this one and kind of go deeper and also go backwards in time and talk about the previous ones. But the winner of this tournament is number six, which was a boysenberry mellow mel. Sweet. <laughs> 14%. I feel like we were like basically, <laughs> basically the exact same. Yeah. yeah. This one was really well done. Uh huh. Really well done. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say anything yet. Also, really well done. But yeah, well, we can say we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. So that'll be next week. Yeah, head on to if the this might be sometime in the future. You might have already seen the previous stuff, but check out the wrap up video if you uh, if it's available, and um, make sure that you go back and check out the previous stuff because we went through this entire tournament and tasted some awesome meads. But I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who submitted a mead because uh, you're literally putting yourself out there to the world to be judged quite literally on YouTube. And um, you have a bunch of people like us just tasting your stuff. So bunch of amateurs. <laughs> I'm, so I'm super thankful. Thank you, thank you to everybody who submitted stuff. Yep. Um, this wrap up video will be out soon. Thank you, BC. Thank you, Tony, for thank your you. time and, and taste testing. Um, I'm excited to now chat a little further about these things. So we'll see you over on that video. Thanks for watching. All right, here we are for the um, after show. We just finished all four rounds of the tournament. And so now we're going to talk about um, a couple things. First of all, we're going to place third or give out third and fourth place for um, those. And then we're also going to talk about some other ones. Um, Tony mentioned an honorable mention, so we might see what that means for us. And we're also just going to kind of see what else um, is going on with this. So this whole experience, super different from last year. Tony can attest. Um, oh, yeah. Last year we did this. This is way more fun. <laughs> This is way cooler than tasting all of your stuff. It's true. It is, I, and I agree because there's like to see those not fun videos. <laughs> click the link right up here. No, I agree because um, I think that this had so much more variety. Yeah, yeah, a lot of different personalities. Like, yeah, and that's the thing is there's really one personality when it's just my stuff, and sure. so. This brought a lot of personalities, a lot of different um, approaches to mead making, too. So I, I found that to be interesting. And we had styles ranging from traditionals to, I mean, buckwheat coffee meads, which is arguably a very weird niche com uh, combination of ingredients. So well, and, and everybody everybody has different has access to different things. And yeah. that's kind yeah. of, that's really, I think, what it comes down to is, like, accessibility to product. Yeah. Um, obviously, we have the internet, but then we have cost restrictions on certain things and stuff like that. So it, it does make for a lot more interesting yeah. event. Yeah. So let's first go ahead and kind of break down number three and number four. So I have them right here. These are the ones that did not go into round four, did not, did not go to the finale. So we have here, this is number 11. It is a session meat. It is a lemongrass and amarillo hops. Lemongrass. Five four, five percent with so sundew. This one also had lemongrass in it. Just what was this one? This was that ginger one. Oh. Yeah. Ginger and lemongrass. I didn't pick up the lemongrass. I didn't either. I mean, I need to retry because we only tasted it once. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should try it again. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. I'm amarillo. Gonna say sundew yeast. Sundew yeast. Because we've used that before. I find that ah, interesting. See, that's the thing. If this had been sweetened a little bit, I think that sundew character would have come out. There's a little bit left if you want to try it. So sundew yeast is a a hefeweizen yeast strain okay. that was gene altered using CRISPR to remove the phenolic generating or deactivate the phenolic generating genes, okay. right? So instead of getting those clove, banana, like spicy phenolics, you only get the juicy, fruity characteristics of the yeast. So it's very popular in mead making because uh -huh. you can make a a juicy berry flavored mead without actually putting any berries or juice in it mm -hmm. because you're getting all those characteristics from the yeast. However, because this one was served dry, 
you don't have any sweetness reinforcing mm -hmm. those fruit flavors. Gotcha. Okay. But we were talking about how we thought we sent some kind of fruit in here, and maybe that was from the hop that was used. Yeah. You're not going to get that from Amarillo hops, That's from but you're going to get that from the yeast. yeast. Yeah. That's interesting. Super interesting. Also, I just want to say real quick, this is really cool to be able yeah. to yeah. see all this information. Yeah. Kudos uh, to the to the people who uh, who did yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I mean, like we're not looking at this stuff before we taste anything. Right. Um, but it is nice to be able to like I don't I don't guys I don't make mead I've never made it I don't I have no interest in fermentation whatsoever process. Um, but it's I still always learn something when I hang out with these people, and um, it's cool to see this stuff because I can at least I understand what a lot of it means or most all of it. Um, so it is cool to see this and be able to be like, okay, this was a style. Did they execute this well? Wouldn't have expected that. Um, just based off tasting and the conversations that we have, what you guys don't see off camera. Um, so it's it's cool to see this stuff. I, I, when we do this again and when we do meet Stampede, I think that might be a conversation of like, this needs to be submitted mm -hmm. so we can we can yeah. really have yeah. that conversation because it's just so helpful. Yeah, that the on on the the system that we use for Mead Stampede, the the recipe part is like an optional. Mm. It might be interesting to do a acquire color. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is cool because now now because we we were like middling in our opinion on this. Now I want to go back and see if I can yeah, taste the Q823 so. yeast and the lemongrass. And all Let's that. yeah. No, I'm I'm curious. But what's interesting? Lemongrass for two meads is pretty. Out of 15 meads submitted, that's pretty interesting. But yeah, I think I've only done two lemongrass meads in my whole and <laughs> fermentation career. Yeah, so that's that's pretty wild that we had both submitted like that. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're deciding right now, 11, which was this right here, that lemongrass and marilla hops, 5% sundew mm -hmm. yeast, versus blueberry pomegranate mellow mel, pomegranate. 11% oh. orange blossom honey, K1V1. Which only means stuff to you, but yeah. Um, huh. Of of these two, these were arguable third or fourth place. Can you tell what that means, real quick? The K one B one is a yeast choice, and it is more of a wine yeast. Um, uh -huh. That sundew is more of a ale mm -hmm. beer brewing yeast, I would say. Okay. Uh, so they kind of produce different things, but this one, I, I don't want to say it's like a. It's not champ. It's not champagne yeast, but it can be really vigorous. Yeah. And and it's it's selected for maintaining floral esters, like maintaining mm -hmm. those floral notes. So it's great for a mead because it's amplifying some of those things that are in your honey. I, I I'll probably ask some other questions like this because I'm sure there's people who are watching this channel that maybe don't know that stuff yet. That's and, great. And so. And I don't. I'm not going to pretend to know. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know something I'm just going to tell you. Hey, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I personally think if I was choosing between these two, third and fourth place, I would put this one because it had third, which is number one, um, in third place because it produced more... Um, oh I thought the, yeah. the honey character to it was nicer. Now, we don't have much, so I'm I sorry. Know, I'm just putting a little bit. Uh, I, I thought it really okay. highlighted honey character in a, in a better way to me than this session mead. Now, they're both... But this is not a session mead. This is eleven percent. So it's see, and I think that's that's the criticism I have from this is it's so watery. Mm -hmm. It feels like it falls in the hydromel range. Yeah, uh, and there's not enough body to back up. The pomegranate really pulls moisture. Really. And then you get all this tannin on the back end when the finish is gone. Mm -hmm. like it doesn't carry through to the the tannin's still there, and there's no finish. It just sort of fades off. Yeah, and then you just left with like a dry mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I, no, it's kind of weird. I think if there if it had been oaked or oh, th th no. throw a little maltodextrin, something to, to give it some I think the oak some, would have just amplified the tannin and I think it needs or that. round it off maybe. It's okay to use two different Too types much? of tannin. I know that. I, I understand <laughs> that, but like just throwing this in a barrel I don't think would have fixed anything. I think it would have helped, and I don't. I don't. Barrel is is a strong term. I think maybe just some oak cubes, a dark toast oak cube, mm -hmm. um, or two, and again maybe a little maltodextrin or lactose, something to build up the mouthfeel, mm -hmm. so it hangs around on your tongue just a little bit longer. Because, um, like you said, if if the mouthfeel was enough to hang on long enough to support the long finish of the tannin it would feel like a more 
cohesive mm. experience. It's possible. I'm saying, I'm saying. I, it's possible. I feel like it could go either way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I feel always, like the oak could just be like something like, why did they put oak in this? <laughs> I'm always a fan of throwing oak at a problem. But that's it. Yeah, that's, it. that's not. That's <laughs> that doesn't fix anything. <laughs> It could though. It doesn't always. It typically doesn't. I don't think. It. I don't think it would fix something in something as low ABV as this. No. But something that's supposed to be a higher, a higher ABV, bigger product. I think adding some oak to round out that profile would help. I don't Welcome back. I don't know. What we did. Um. I don't remember where we were because of the debacle I was just in, but. We were talking about the necessity or lack thereof of oaking this one yeah. to, or this I think, one it, I think to it could have it. helped. I just personally, between the two, I would much rather drink number one, a, a glass of number one over number 11. And that's just, like, this one's good, but I, I found more enjoyment in number one. So. I, I that's just, not that you have to, you don't have to. I could drink 10 of these. Uh, yeah, I could drink 12 of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that means then. So you guys think that number eleven? Yeah, it's number third. Three. Okay, and then fourth place would be number one. I guess. I, I mean, mean that's by little, uh, like. Yeah, I guess so. But that was the top four. So, is there another one that you think should be in well, fourth so place that's, instead? That's that's the thing though. Is the way this tournament is structured, it's kind of luck of the draw. <laughs> It's kind of like the draw on where they fall, right. and I think some of them may be lucked a little further along so, than they would have. So, and that uh, beyond that, then what would what would have um, should have gone for it? I should, I should say should have should have gone. Yeah. For what it? do you think? Given a different pairing, maybe what do you think should have actually been further along? I think that this peach. Was there one that's memorable? I can. Oh totally yeah, find it. yeah. Think, Nick's Nick's one. Yeah, Nick's. I think should have could have had a lot better chance. I still voted for it. We were kind of splitting hairs on that. I, I was kind of splitting hairs on that. That was a with. tough one because it Nick's. What was it? Speed went up against the blueberry or the boysenberry melon, no, which was ended up winning. The winning. So, yeah. So I think this this still had a really this so really. I yeah. think that one is a better fourth place than. I agree. This than one. The, yeah. 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 Uh, by far, I think this is way better executed. Um, it's more balanced. It's just generally more delicious. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, not the same that's not good. It's just. Yeah, yeah. It's just that this is generally a better. This just a better product. Yeah. You know. Um, I, I think the structure of the tournament is fun. I don't know right. that it ne necessarily it's, distills your quality down yeah. to the end. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious how this would be if like you had a qualifying and you had a qualifying and then we did this. Oh. And I could participate in both. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you're you're to get to the finals. Right. You've got a lot of the chaff kind of set right, right, out right. beforehand. And yeah. don't don't run it this way. Just like line them all up, taste them all, go through the whole thing. We find a way to qualify mm -hmm. in some capacity, and then um, you know whether it be a point system or whatever the case might be. Yeah. And then we go okay. These these out of these fifteen, these you know seven get to move on or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, and then and then we have two houses kind of come together on this thing, so it's like an east-west coast type deal. Ooh. You know what I mean? So that that sure. might yeah. be a little bit a little bit better way to do it so that it's it's kind of slightly more fair and you get the you get the riffraff out of there. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so the only yeah. problem with that with this case was the, the numbers of having people involved. Sure, sure. So you, like, have, you have to have more people. Like, yeah. you know, I would love, honestly, I would love to open this up and say, hey, start with 32 and then pair down to the top 16. Like, I think that would have been awesome. Um, I personally, and I think everybody watching who's seen the back behind the scenes of it, it's been a little bit tough uh, to get people to chip in meads on time. And we just yeah. got done with Mead Stampede. And yeah. um, I think it's because the first year I've done this, 
it was just a little different timing. So there are things I could have done sure, better, sure. but I like that idea. I like the idea of, of starting with more. The only, the, only pro- the only, you know, and the only deal with that is then you have like, well, it's so we're sort of faced with the same issue of like, well, this person is at this one, but maybe you had somebody disagree. So you have to have like that tiebreaker, which is why, why I was saying like, we have potentially four people or five people and you have two or three people on each side that are doing both mm-hmm. so that you can discern. You have bias and unbias. Yeah. Kind, kind yeah. of. That's kind of how it works. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. I think that's something to look at for this next year. Sure. There, so there's a couple in here. We just talked about that. We talked about, about Nick's. Um, you know, th- there are some unfortunate... I think that's the nature of a tournament, though. You know, sometimes you get stuck with the team that's the first seed and you're the whatever yeah. 22nd yeah. seed. Like, I think there's a little bit of that that happens naturally, but you're right. That is something to, to fight against. Um, Nix was very, very good, and I do think given another um, placement or different matchup, they could have gone further. Um, I saw one, that. That's interesting. Yeah, it's in primary, they... they this ginger, this or this lemongrass ginger thing, they use semi on blanc concentrate. Mm. So it's a Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. The um, the other one I found interesting, I just pulled it out, was this number 14. And I, I pulled this out because there are elements of this one that are really good. Also, the amount of stuff you put in is very interesting. This was a gallon of honey, 40 pounds of raspberries, EC11118. No water. That was this raspberry oh. mead. And I'm very curious, because it, it has such a tart Yes. It was face. insanely tart. Mm-hmm. But as a, as a mead maker, 40 pounds of raspberries. That's a ton of raspberries. That's a lot of raspberries. And no water. I mean, your yield on this is going to be like three gallons. Yeah, I mean, he probably sent one of his five bottles a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so... Like, that is, you're going to lose a lot. Or try any more of that. I might, I might retaste it. I'm not going to right at this moment, but yeah. Is that the one I was thinking of? I love the label, by the way, whoever mm-hmm. this is. Um, really cool label, really cool font. Um, kind of fun. Which, can I see from it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that is, uh, I like the little, I like the little different, you know, the raspberries in the different poses. If anyone wants to see it. Davey, I didn't get his last name, so Davey, if you have a last name, let me know. It's kind of like that, I don't know, it's kind of like that pirate font. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. yeah. It just kind of fits it. It just sort of suits it. I think it's cool. This one was just super interesting to me. I don't think, I, I think it has some flaws, of course, but knowing what was put into it is impressive. I mean, yeah, the no, raspberry it's... comes through like mm-hmm. really intensely. Yeah. It's so dark for raspberry. It smells fantastic. I mean, I'm just smelling it out of the bottle. I mean, it just smells really good. It, it was just crazy, crazy, crazy tart. I wish it was a, I, I'm sure there's a way to dial that back. Sweetness. It's, it's very, yeah, I, I would say. It's so sweet already. I don't, I don't think, think this one's, so. I don't think this one's Okay, maybe I should retaste you it. And if you look at the final gravity, there's barely anything left oh, in it. Okay, yeah. It's damn near dry. Which, I don't know what his starting point was, but 40 pounds of raspberries, no water, makes me wonder, I mean, how much yield can you get from 40 pounds of raspberries? I mean, I Jeez, think, I mean, three gallons. Uh, so 40 pounds of raspberries is going to yield you probably, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. oh my yeah. God, it's a jarringly tart. Probably around four gallons of juice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it probably was technically a five gallon batch, but when you factor in all that fruit matter that's got to come out, all that pectin that's got to come yeah. out. Um, yeah, probably three gallons, two and a half to three gallons of yield on the other end of it, which is like an impressive investment, but as a dry-ish, off-dry mead, it just misses the mark for me in in retaining honey and, and achieving balance. Mm-hmm. This one with honey would have fixed a lot of problems, would have fixed the tartness, would have fixed, I think, what? some of the then acid what problems. The, what is the one I'm thinking of that we had that was super tart and really sweet already, and you were like, could it to be sweeter? Um... This one. Uh, the cranberry one. one. It was. was it the I think it was the cranberry one. Yeah. Yeah. Fairly certain. Because that was the one we were like, 
I was saying cranberry should be could potentially be used as an adjunct, mm-hmm. but not as a forefront mm-hmm. thing where like we're putting it up front. It's uh, I don't think it was this one. Really? This, this is very sweet. Was it that raspberry meat? No, wait, that's the one that we're talking about. Um, there was another one. No, no, this isn't it either. It was so tart and also very sweet. Mixed, was, was it, it nine? Was it? Look up nine. Find nine. Larry's blueberry bomb. Is this this one? I think it was this one. I think you're right. Number nine, because it's a mixed berry bomb. I don't have any other information, so I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yes. This one needs probably another 10 or 20 points of gravity. Okay, yeah, it's not as tart as I remember it, but it's still pretty tart. Is it as sweet as you remember? Yeah. It? No, I think this this needs more honey. And I think that will help level it out just just enough. This one's quite good. It just it needs that that dial turned up. I don't hair. I think there are circumstances where you can fix meads mm-hmm. by adjuncts. I don't know that honey would fix this. I think mm-hmm. what needed to be fixed was earlier on the amount of raspberries or maybe blackberries or whatever tart fruit there was. Maybe it was just unripe fruit that was presented needed to be far less. Interesting. Because I think the sweetness level, to me personally, is is there. It's just what, the tartness. Was this labeled as a melomel? No, it's mm. it's labeled as a berry bomb. Mm-hmm. So that would that would put it in the like typically sack strength, fifteen percent or more. Um, uh, but berry bomb, yeah, melomel sack probably. I I just don't think that that honey is going to. I think it will help in some ways, but I think the the core problem with it was not the amount of honey, but more so the amount of tart fruit. Now that's hard to fix early on because you don't always know how your fruit will respond to yeast or to fermentation. Um, the the if you if you look at what the experts talk about in balance, like the Ken Shrimps of the world, and yeah. balancing out those big fruit bombs. It's always don't be afraid to sweeten it much more than you think you should. Yeah, I just don't know if I would enjoy this too too sweet. The next time we do this, you need to have uh, simple syrup and mm. bitters on hand so we can play around with yeah uh, adjusting them in the glass. I've done that before with beer. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't go <get> well. <laughs> <laughs> like trying to add something to a finished product was like really weird. Um, it's it's recommended for for uh, for mead. Okay, for yeah, because especially like I did it with beer, like just and I just did this like at my house, like on a drunken night, you know. I was like, I'm gonna put vanilla in my style, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> and or like I'm gonna do this, and, and it, none of them were good. <laughs> and and I just and I just kept thinking like surely some of this is gonna work out, and never did. But I you know I didn't try have some controlled study, you know. I just you know, play uh-huh. around with it. Just like a drop of bitters in a glass like this, or just a, a few drops of simple syrup, so you can understand how the sweetness or a little bit yeah. extra tannin. I, I could be very wrong too. I don't. I will not sit here and say that I know because honey could have fixed every little part of this. But I don't think it would have fixed everything. But I think it would have balanced the acid. There were a lot of these in here that had one, like you know, one little fix on a problem could have launched it forward. I think that's that's the thing I notice with a lot of mead making, especially people who are pretty confident and competent at mead making, is that they, they have a good idea what they're doing, but there's this one little thing that could always propel it forward mm-hmm. into a different manner. And I don't know about you, but a lot of it boiled down to two things, sweetness, so adding more honey to fix, and acid balance. Mm-hmm. And we've previously talked about this yeah. too, and things. Those are what we noticed in, in Mead Stampede too. Sweetness, acid balance, tannic value, tannin adjustments mm-hmm. are, are key to how well your mead will actually turn out. Um, you could have the, the best fruit in the world and the best honey in the world, but if it doesn't have a good balance, it doesn't really I, I I'm curious. 
how how many people at home who are making me you guys actually might be able to answer this for me are putting a lot of focus on I've given a lot of thought about things since the meat stampede. Yeah. I'm curious how many people are putting their energy and focus on really getting down a traditional weed and like nailing it and then taking what they learned from that and applying it across the board. Now, obviously, there are challenges with other things as you move mm-hmm. forward and you add fruit and adjuncts. Mm-hmm. But basically, what I'm trying to say is if you can make a traditional, theoretically, mm-hmm. if you can make a traditional, you can nail that in a couple of different ways, right? You should have enough experience by these this bare bones. It's just like learning your scales mm-hmm. as a musician. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's you know it's your elementary level stuff. If you can get that down, how much further can you take your other styles? Because you've 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 gone through the gutter on this on on your traditionals. Yeah, you yeah. know, and how many of you? I mean, I, I guess this is a question for all of you that I'll probably never get the answer to. But how many of you are focusing on that and um, really spending time, like, kind of practicing these small mm-hmm. um, exercises, mm-hmm. basically, and thinking about it that way as an exercise um, to move into a greater um, scale, yeah, or in a, a larger scale, or like a more complex. Thing so that when you finally do add fruit, you have, or you finally do, like, make a change, and you have the experience on your traditionals to see how that responds, because you don't have those adjuncts interrupting, and you can just see it for what it is. Yeah, you know? I, I often recommend beginners to start by perfecting a traditional need. Yeah, but, uh, my, my, but my point is, like, how, how many, many are actually doing actually that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no. like, how many, how many of you are like, yeah, I, I'm going to set out and I'm going to make 50 traditionals this year. Or whatever. You know, whatever whatever is feasible for you. Nailing the basics. Yeah, getting sure. those basics down yeah. so that you, you have a foundation. Yeah, yeah I, that's, I think that's key to good meat making is starting. It's, like anything, it's just anything. Yeah. Anything. Anything. You, any prof, your profession. Whatever mm-hmm. it is that you do. Having a base understanding of elementary stuff is super crucial. Mm-hmm. And I think when you get down to it, that's what we're looking at. It's called a traditional lead for a reason. Yeah. And I think if, if I'm not going to tell anyone who makes me what to do because I don't do it. But I will say, based off my experiences, um, that's what makes sense to me is that like if I were to jump into this realm, I would do my best. It's not to say you shouldn't try other things, mm-hmm. but I would do my best to be like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend time making... A tradition, making traditional meads and like learning those steps and seeing what happens along the way yeah. so that, you know, when I do add fruit in I, or I do something else, I, I can like, I have context. Yeah. You know? So I feel like, and you may agree, I'm not going to say you're going to disagree, you may agree <laughs> with me here. I feel like mead is something that for new homebrewers, particularly people who have never brewed before, mm-hmm. Mead inspires a ton of creativity, mm-hmm. yeah. and they want to. They don't want to start with a traditional. They want to hit the ground running with a, a you know crazy varietal of honey and mm-hmm. a bunch of fruit. They want to hit it with adjuncts. They want to dump a bunch of oak in there. They want to do all the things because they're so excited mm-hmm. about the opportunity of mead, and it comes out tasting like trash because they don't understand those fundamentals. Yeah, and I did that same thing when I first started. I I found my document of all my first brews that yeah. I made in the first year I was brewing. And I was just throwing shit every which way. <laughs> yeah. Like I had all kinds of stuff in there. And I remember being like, man, I'm not very good at this. This stuff's awful. And it's because I, I wasn't just focused. And the traditional meat offers an opportunity to focus on those fundamentals. Yeah. And I, and I think, I just think I, I'm going to say Garrett and I are both musicians. Um, and we went to college together, we went through that experience together, um, and, you know, he has stayed in the profession, I have not stayed in the profession. Um, that said, 
I, I'm i going to relate it because I'm sure there are other musicians who are making meat out there who play music or whatever. And you just have to think about it that way. And if you guys if you guys aren't musicians and you maybe don't understand the context, um, just knowing what it takes to like to try and master something. And, and I think that's really, really hard to do. Obviously, it's very hard to master a skill. Mm -hmm. um, but taking a step back, and looking at what you're, what you're actually doing, because I don't think today that any of the meads we had were just like totally grotesque, like couldn't could drink any of them. Like <laughs> yeah. I don't feel that way. No. And I and I commend all of you for the courage that it takes to submit something and like, you know, be prepared to be judged in that way. That said, um, as even if you think, man, this is really boring, I don't, I don't, I just hate doing this, like, get through it, like, grind it out, mm -hmm. and I think you will all, in a year, just a year, you will all be so thankful mm -hmm. for the time you spent on that, even if you don't do it in a year, like, even if you just, like, I'm gonna, you know what, hey, this year I'm gonna make two traditionals, and I'm gonna try to learn from those experiences, and I'm, I'm gonna put some time and effort into that, and really make sure that I'm not just going, you know, just, ah, I'm just going to make traditional, right? I think you will be thankful you did it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, this is just coming from an outside perspective and like having some experience in other fields. And uh, th that's my advice to all of you is like, take a step back, look at what you're good at. Because you all have skills that you're yeah. good at in this. Yeah. Like, all of you have some sort of skills within this set, within this um, field, mm -hmm. right, of mean making. That you're like, I'm, I'm really good at doing this. Like, you know, I mean, 35 means this year or whatever. And, and you know what? Consistently, like, these are things I'm doing. I'm, I, I can do that. Go ahead and take a step back and say, like, how can I apply this to something else? Or, like, you know, um, what am I getting wrong? Right. Making notes for yourself. And, uh, and, and and getting back to basics on something like that. Uh, yeah, I, I think that at the end of the day, for me, that what really changed my mean making was making lots of things, but also when I started putting things to the test and trying, not just making, uh, one of my favorite things to do now is make a traditional mead with the honey and make something else with it and do some sort of recipe. The recipe could be something I create, something I find, but to see what the core value of said honey is or to to let's say do an a b test and, and it's not necessarily the most um riveting thing all the time you know yeah. but one simple test you can do is if you want to understand acid balance take your mead whatever you have at home go and buy the three different acids you can get tartaric malic and cit citric pour like 12 glasses that seems crazy but then just start putting little pinches of each thing in. Okay, what does a little citric acid do? Oh, wow, it does that. What's malic acid do? Mm -hmm. You can learn acid profiles, as simple as that. And you just start tinkering. messing around. You're just tinkering, You're just with, tinkering it. with it. And, and I think, too, like, to that point, like, if you can really get this small scale down, like, I'm going to make this really small batches of stuff and like, kind of nail that, mm -hmm. you, 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 can, you can really hone in on that. Blending your honeys... Um, you know, in wine, it's very, 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 very common to blend wines. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how common that is for me. Where you're, where I wish maybe, it was more common. <laughs> maybe, maybe not necessarily blending honeys, but like you have two products, finished products mm -hmm. that co maybe complement each other, and like spending like, hey, I've made fifteen traditionals this year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna now sit down with yeah. my fifteen meads, and I'm gonna start mixing, and I'm gonna start yeah. tinkering, and try to come up with the like the the pinnacle. Yeah. Right, and it's like you have different yeast and different um, honeys and combinations of honeys. Like that is a skill all of its own, and that may be something you're not even good at. Right, of like, right. like you might be like Tony. I'm gonna call you in to come and sit and taste through all this stuff and blend for me. Like that, you, you're like I made all this stuff, but I need somebody to come in and help me blend. Yeah, you know, um, and, and that's where, in the traditional sense, I think. Things can get exciting, you know, and things can get really real, you know, really quick. Where you're like, I have a new respect for this. I, I didn't, you know, 
and just even just making traditionals consistently, like having an appreciation for it. Yeah, I, I have a lot deeper appreciation for it. Having coming away from BTMP um, now than I yeah. did at the time, because I just didn't really know. Yeah, you know. Um, but then, like talking about it afterwards, like none of you all, none of y'all. I don't know if the videos have been out yet or any like comments have been out or anything yet. But, a little bit. Uh, yeah, we'll, yeah. Okay. We'll Probably when the time this video comes out, there will be more information. But yeah. um, you know, a lot of what you guys don't see is like I'm asking a ton of questions because I I just don't I'm not there I'm not living it so I just don't really know and so then that perspective kind of helps me understand more um, and then I, and then I can step away and be like okay. Yeah, I, I totally get it. I have a lot of deep appreciation for this. And I think, I just keep driving the same thing home. It's like, <laughs> go do this because yeah, I think man. it's super important for you guys. And, and I want you all to be successful. I really do think um, the point you made is, is something that should be reiterated, which is playing with multiple honey varietals and that blending of honeys. Because honeys provide, I mean, just such different characters mm -hmm. depending on the source. Mm -hmm. And particularly those monofloral sources, and I think there's like a couple of big undiscovered areas for mead making that are going to be explored over the next few years. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have the benefit of being on the forefront of talking about that publicly. Uh -huh. But water chemistry, which is the thing we talked about some briefly here today, yeah, very briefly, and building out a honey bill, just like in beer, you would build out a grain bill. Yeah. Have you ever done a water tasting? No. We should do that sometime. Mm -hmm. I, I can just tell the difference between Texas and Texas. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 it's really cool. So, so <laughs> and if you guys are doing this at home, it's just a very cheap, fun activity that you can participate in. Um, and uh, you don't have to become intoxicated. Um, but you just... Actually, you the opposite. Yeah. Uh, it's incredibly <laughs> hydrated. Yeah. But it's really cool if you guys, uh, depending on where you, any of you live, like, especially if you can find, like, really... Um, like culturally diverse grocery stores, mm -hmm. a lot of times I have really unusual waters. Um, this is, I've learned, there's a store, I'll have to tell you about later, is a European grocery store down the street. Okay. Um, that's super cool. And they have like waters from Georgia and um, Interesting. Uh, Lithuania and, and uh, a lot of different Eastern European countries. Huh. Um, sparkling waters, still waters, all sorts of fun things. And they don't have a ton, but they, they have some. Go around and collect some of these, cost you. I don't know. Spend twenty bucks on water. You know, it sounds yeah. kind of silly, but like, spend, and you'll end up with quite a few bottles. And taste of those waters. Now, obviously, these aren't waters that you could use. I mean, I guess you could, but you probably wouldn't use in in your meat. But it gives you some perspective. Yeah. And then, yeah. Um, and then, like, when you're tasting through honeys, like, getting a little saucer or a spoon or something and tasting through your honeys by themselves, mixing them together. Um, trying them maybe on some bread in different contexts, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of live with them a little bit before you really start playing with mm -hmm. them. Um, and understanding your, um, understanding your, um, what's what I'm looking for here about. I mean, it's kind of like you were saying with terroir. It's like understanding the very nature. Your ingredients. Understanding your ingredients. Yeah, and where it came from, what what contributed to those. Flavors. Yes, like I, I guess if any of you guys are just buying honey and being like, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna just buy some honey today, and like whatever, you know, whatever honey you're using, you're like, I'm just gonna try this. Mm -hmm. And then just like throw it in a vat. It's like, well, hold, hold on. You, did you even taste that? Yeah, like, was, what was the intention? Did you smell that? It? Yeah. Did you, did you eat it? Did, uh, do you know what it tastes like? Right. Because right. Then, then you can understand, like, oh, this translates. Now I can see. Like I've reserved a little bit for myself too. You know, like, I have a little, a few tablespoons so that like once it's complete, complete mm -hmm. fermentation, like I can compare the same. Mm -hmm. Is it coming through? That's that's the thing that we should do on mead swap because mm -hmm. we should save a little vial of the honey we start out. Don't take the honey today and just save some then. I do think that I thought this is things you guys did. Well, we should have been. we not not honey, but in no. that in that show particularly, we will save a sample from each batch every time something changes. So well, I figured you, you guys were tasting the honeys. And oh, like, definitely like, tasting the honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but, I mean, but I mean, afterwards, I figured you guys were doing that. You guys no, were doing that. No, 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 not really. You should be doing that. I, 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 I propose. <laughs> so, I propose that you should be doing that. says. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know it's a YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> you, guys, you guys have pretty much hit every point that I want to emphasize. With this tournament specifically, um, this is a... Everything worth something in life requires a little bit of work. Absolutely. And... 
um, a bit of a grind to say the least. So we rounded and came down to our final two and those, I think it boiled down to execution. And I think that's a big part of it. And what you guys are emphasizing is execution and understanding. And so if you're at home watching this and maybe you um, sent a meet in and you are wondering, well, man, what did I do wrong? I don't think there's anything that anybody did necessarily wrong here is just refining and kind of uh, continuing to build your foundation. There was so, uh, there was one mead we tasted that I actually, I take back what I said earlier, that I did not enjoy. Um, and, and... To um, remain nameless. Yeah, and I don't remember whose it was. Um, I think I'm, I was like, it kind of tastes like it has bread on it. Not the first one, but the second one. That I was like, kind of tastes like it has bread on it. Do you remember? Oh, it was the... It was on this side of the table. It was the tobacco one. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe one. I don't understand what happened. Yeah. It's okay. the style. That's the style. It's the style. Okay. That's, that's intentional. There's cinnamon. Yeah, there was cinnamon in it. Okay. Steven, I, I loved it. But you really liked it. I like yeah. tapache though. Okay. I'm okay. A, I'm a tapache guy. You're gonna have to talk about what's happening there because I don't really know. It's it's the the diversity of microorganisms that live on the pineapple create a unique funk every batch. Yeah. So you can make two batches of tapache by buying two you know dole versus one other kind of okay. of pineapple that was grown in a different part of the world. And the microorganisms make it unique to that batch, and so that's intentional to style. And you're okay. never going to have two cups of tapache that taste the same. Okay, I, I'll retaste it. Um, I'll, I'll taste I it think you didn't like the pepper that was in it. Yeah. I also okay. So I will say like, I don't like peppers in beer. I don't like them in uh, apparently meats. <laughs> Um, I've, I've, never, try mine I've, I've never had one that I really like, and I've tried several like beers that have peppers in them yeah. or whatever, like you know the infamous Prairie Bomb mm -hmm. that has the peppers in it. I just would rather. I like that one. I, you know what I think it is? I think it's the alcohol and pepper thing that I don't think like, play, it back, doesn't yeah. play well together okay. for me at all. Um, it's like eating a really spicy pepper and then trying to have like some wine or like alcohol. Mm -hmm. It amplifies it, mm -hmm. and maybe I just get overwhelmed by that sensation. Hmm. I'm into it. Um, so you guys, have, you guys have already said everything I want to say, essentially. But what I want to most emphasize is that you have to keep trying, mm -hmm. and it's not it's because for everybody, whether you've made the best mead and won the Mazer Cup, or you have made the worst mead you've ever had and everybody hates it. Keep trying, because <laughs> I can attest, my Keep first, my, I'm uh, 180 plus now, meads in, and I'm still learning things, and I, I feel like I'm one of the nerdiest people in the mead community doing the weirdest tests. So if I'm still struggling, <laughs> and I feel like I've exhausted all these things, you might have just started. So keep going, make sure you're buying honey to try, whether it be local or other places and then just, just make more. Um, this has been a lot of fun though. I've really enjoyed this, uh, you know, them not being my meats has taken some <laughs> weirdness out of the equation, yeah. to say the least. Oh, um, do we want to do an honorable mention? I know I, I proposed that idea. I know I haven't really talked about what Well, what be. was your honorable mention? Did you have one? Because I think we said, like, we felt like, really, like, Nick should have been. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think, yeah, I, was, I think we oh. felt like that should have been placed higher, but, like, given, a, like its place and yeah. where it was. And it became third place, I think. Unless is that what there we was, agreed to? I think that's what we kind or of thought. Fourth place. I think it was fourth place. I think we. Had, okay. Do, is there anything else that you guys thought that like, man, that was really really good though? And I just can't really think of anything that. Like, uh, without going to me. through and tasting all of them, I'd have a hard time saying. I think that the thing is that one is very fresh in my mind. Yeah. Um, so I I do think that there were some, and it's not that I don't want to go and. and Backtrack, but I do think that we would. Be oh, what about that? What about that one that's sitting right there? The uh, bourbon, that's the bourbon barrel bourbon moche. Yeah, mm. yeah, that 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 thing was really good. Yes. What's what another Susan? Though? I don't know what was that again? What what was the number? Four. Four. I don't have my beginning numbers, so I can't say what it was up against. But 
Let's take a look at what was in here, because we never even took this off. Oh, I didn't even know that had information in it. Mesquite honey that has been both bocheted and... Oh! Honey. Vanilla, mandarin orange peel, banana, orange blossom honey, 71B, and EC1118. Isn't EC1118 is a killer, killer factor? Maybe they came in after the fact, after... So raisins can called it. Um, <laughs> I did. I said it tastes like dry fruit. Uh, I'm going to retaste it, because I, I think we should all retaste this. Oak soaked in bourbon. Final grab, 1.016. Alcohol is just under 14%. Let me get it. Very clear. Nice. I do. I do remember this one. I think it was very, very, very good. It had a lot going on. That's what I remember. What was it up against that we were like combating? I don't have my starting numbers, so I can't say. No, no, no. Towards the end, was it this? Oh, one? it was up against number eleven, which was. I think this is the one I voted for. Maybe you voted for it, but then y'all voted for the other one. I think that was it. It was the uh, this one. It was, oh, it was number right. 11 versus this one. And you guys. This I mean, is... The heat was heat was one of the things you guys... You, yeah, there's a lot going on. I taste that banana. Mm -hmm. And that citrus thing. I knew there were adjuncts in this, and, and you were telling me there wasn't. <laughs> did I say that? I think you did. Somebody told me I was wrong. Oh, that's because the, this label says that there isn't. Hmm. We never opened this one to find... I didn't even know there was information. Yeah, because this one just says that it's oh, yeah. a boche with mesquite, honey, and oak. That one's got more yeah. so much more information. I like the raisins in this. Okay. I, you can t I don't... It's not... It's not, like, distracting. I, I, I just... I don't think I like the flavor of raisins. I, I don't, don't eat well, them. I, I don't drink them. Yeah. I don't... I just don't like raisins. I don't that's really like, think it's that's good. like something like a four-year-old. I personally, I would have passed this. <laughs> While it is very different than this, which is what it was up against, I would have, I would have passed this over it because I think that, um, I think this one has a lot of flavor profiles I like I, more than number eleven. Yeah, but, I, that makes sense. I think both of the things we're talking about right now, the Nick's and and uh, who's this one? Susan. Susan. Susan's. Are very deserving both of honor and honorable mention. Sure, I'm, I'm. I don't disagree with that. I just. I don't. I don't love this one. Yeah. Sure. I think it's interesting. I don't. I. I do a three ounce pour, and that would like be enough for me. I see. Yeah. Yeah. What I think we've come down to after after talking about some things, when this is repeated, when we do another tournament, we might change up some variables, and um, given that more people submit, we might be able to change up the, the system a little bit in a way that will uh, um, have, include more means. So I don't know exactly what that looks like, but I wanna encourage everybody to um, go ahead and start making meads, not necessarily for this tournament, even though yeah. that, that would be a thing, but start making a mead that you are willing to submit to a competition. Of course, I'm going to push people towards Mead Stampede because that's our competition and we are, are hopefully running forward to be able to do this next year. So you can go ahead and, and start making something in anticipation for that. And I would encourage you to because mead takes time unless you're making something that's session worthy. Um, yeah. So go ahead and start making something, whether for our competition, whether for the Mazer Cup, whether for anything else that you might find, so that you're ready to submit things. And just a little pro tip, make sure you bottle in smaller bottles because you don't want to be sending in 750s to competitions. So keep a couple big bottles, but bottle some small ones. Start making some stuff and uh, don't be afraid to experiment. Can, can I make a suggestion that we do this with, like, only traditionals? I was going to say the same thing. I, I think that would be really fun. I would love to see a version of this where you only have traditionals and hopefully see a wide variety of honey mm -hmm. varieties. Like, if maybe we could do this in, like, uh, again, I don't want to put you on the spot here, mm -hmm. but... I'm all about it. I like um, on the spot. Like, right. like, do this in six months with only traditionals. I've, it may be a limited time frame, but yeah, yeah. I, well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I do like know. this. I, I love the idea, and I think I'm w very open to opening this to other doors, whether it be Mellow Mel's category, and doing this because the the tournament style is brutal in some regards, but it does make you um, it make you work makes you work kind of hard. And so I think at the end of the day, 
if you're not putting work into your bead, you're not gonna get what you want out of it. It's very rare that you just throw stuff in and magically it's a perfect bead. So I'm all about that. Um, I think that'd be fun. In fact, if you're watching this now, um, look forward for the future. I might be trying to put something together. Um, there are avenues by which to follow those things like my Facebook, like the Discord. Um, I did a lot of reaching out on those things for people to send in bottles. So you might not find all the information um, somewhere random. You gotta follow me in some capacity to find out where to send it. So uh, make sure you are, are following those things, but I like your guys' ideas and I think that this will definitely happen sooner than later again. Hopefully with some, maybe a little different direction. And I, I mean, I'm just, I'm not that any of you guys probably care or want to know, but I'll do, if anyone, if anybody wants to get in contact with me, my Instagram is um, at the Berg nerd, as in B-U-R-G Burgundy oh. um, nerd um, or burger, that's what you fancy because I, yeah. I love burgers. Um, but if anybody wants to get in touch with me, that's a really easy way to get in touch with me. Um, uh, not that I think I can help you in your meat making in any capacity, but, um, you know, if anybody just wants to chat about bullshit, we can do that there. Yeah. Well, it's perfect. Check out, um, Tony's, I'll put all this up in the description, of course. Especially if anyone wants to learn more about wine or like, I post ones on there from time to time and, and like have discussions about stuff and, um... You know, I'm very accessible. Yeah. So Tony's stuff will be down below, and I'll probably put it on the screen. BC's channel is doing the most. Um, you probably have seen BC on my channel. Um, and, of course, there's all my things, too. But thank you guys so much for coming on and, and doing this. This has been a lot of fun. It's been a gauntlet in its own uh, yeah. manner. But I do think that um, we have narrowed things down in a fun way, and I've definitely learned a lot from this experience. So... Make sure you go out and make more mead, taste more mead, and support every mead avenue you can around. So, thank you guys for watching. See you later. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.